The Royal Knights of Vitoin have been at it for over five centuries, perfecting the art of looking majestic in armor. Now about the training camp, it's like an exclusive men's club, a place where guys can buff up their sword skills and flex their muscles without worrying about breaking a nail. In the camp, women, despite their mystical essence, found themselves excluded from wielding enchanted swords. Maybe they're afraid the women would bring too much sanity to the place. Who needs that, right? Meet John Smith, the fresh-faced squire with dreams bigger than a dragon's appetite. At the ripe age of 15, he strutted into the royal training camp, eyes sparkling with the anticipation of battles and shiny armor. But oh, the seasoned veterans in the camp, those guys who've probably been sparing since the invention of the round table, they looked at him and said, hold your horses, newbie. This isn't a fairy tale. It's a sweat-soaked saga of swordplay and blisters. Imagine being welcomed to the club with a side of calm down, kid. You're just a page in the epic novel of our calloused hands. Picture this, the soon-to-be knights, sweating like they've just discovered a dragon in the sauna, are abruptly summoned. They drop the heavy logs they've been heaving around, thinking they've finally caught a break. But no, in the middle of the training grounds, there's this old man who looks like he's seen more battles than there are pages in a history book. He's got that I've been around since the invention of the wheel vibe. And get this, he calls them Grey Tigers, not sure if it's a cool nickname or the start of an unusual zoo collection. Anyway, he unveils their temporary captain, Jilga Masamune. She's standing there, probably thinking, great, I get to babysit a bunch of sweaty guys swinging swords. All this drama is because Captain Manon caught a case of prolonged illness. Maybe he had too much exposure to dragon sneezes. Who knows? It's like a soap opera, but with more chainmail. Imagine our young NC expecting a captain with a beard and maybe a few scars, only to find out Captain Cool is a woman. Cue the collective gasp of the Grey Tigers. Elves are in the mix. Tradition's getting a makeover, and not everyone's ready for it. Some knights are in full panic mode, worried that five centuries of tradition are about to crumble like a stale cookie. An elf? In our midst? What's next? Unicorns at the round table. Meanwhile, the confusion level hits peak chaos. They were told no women were allowed, but here's Gilda Masamune, breaking barriers and hearts. And those who are fine with it are probably thinking, well, at least she's not a human, so it's technically not breaking the rules, right? And then there's the faction quietly raising their hands for private lessons, probably hoping to get some clarity in a world suddenly turned upside down. The old man, probably tired of all the melodrama, shouts like a thunderstorm, calm down, you overgrown gray tigers. He drops some knowledge bombs, saying this wasn't just a random choice. General Dutch, the big cheese in charge, gave the nod. You don't question General Dutch unless you want a one-way ticket to Dragon Janitor duty. He lays down the law, disdain a woman in the midst of the knights, and you might as well hand in your armor now. It's like a medieval HR policy with a touch of you don't mess with the general. And just to seal the deal, he throws in a nugget of reassurance. Hey, since this came from the top dog, the Royal Knights of Vitoin won't be turning into a punchline. Our reputation is safe, folks. No need to panic, just swing those swords and get back to training. It's like a medieval pep talk to soothe the troubled souls of the Grey Tigers. And just when you thought the drama was settling, enter Mr. Good Vibes from the Grey Tigers. He's all like, hey, let's give Jilga a warm welcome, shall we? Probably planning a welcome party with medieval party hats and everything. But wait, plot twist. A hulking giant of a man sneaks up behind Gilda, wanting to get acquainted personally. Little did he know, Gilda was not the one for surprise hugs. In a move smoother than a dragon scale, she pulls off a tackle that would make a pro wrestler jealous. The big guy takes a nostive into the dirt, and before you can say enchanted sword, Gilda steps on him like she's claiming victory in a dance-off. And here's the kicker, she casually informs the man she just stepped on that he's now deceased. Talk about a power move. John, witnessing this display of elf ninja skills, probably thought, note to self, don't mess with the temporary captain. Gilga, after her ground stomping declaration, decides it's time for a hair flip, leaving MC in a state of shockness. Probably a hair flip so legendary, it could slay a metaphorical dragon on its own. But wait, the drama doesn't pause for hair antics. Gilga, now the drill surgeon we never knew we needed, gathers everyone's attention. She drops the bombshell, armor up, gray tigers. The knights are like, wait, what? Midday armor party? But Gilga, with the authority of someone who just turned a guy into a human welcome mat, says to hurry up or face her wrath. Then comes the wake-up call, a booming elf voice telling them not to slack off. 
Suddenly, the gray tigers are wide awake, scrambling into armor like they're late for a dragon slaying appointment. And just to make it interesting, she orders them to form pairs and start running. Welcome to the new age of knightly fitness, where the only dragons you slay are your own excuses for not running in armor. Now imagine this scene, the gray tigers looking like a chaotic assembly line of clinking armor, following Gilga's orders like knights on a mission. But wait, the captain herself isn't just barking orders, she's in the armor fashion game too. Hair tied, head armor on, leg plates, arm guards, hand gloves. Gilga's putting on the full medieval runway show. Once everyone's decked out in shining armor, it's gone time. Swords unsheathed, sparks flying. It's like a medieval showdown on the training grounds. Gilga, the watchful eye in the midst of clanging swords, probably thinking, ah, my little gray tigers, time to see if all that armor wasn't just for show. The battleground is alive with the metallic melody of gray tigers going full on night mode. In the midst of this sword swirling chaos, our hero John catches Captain Gilga's eye. Oh boy, when the captain looks at you, you know something's about to go down. Like a plot twist in a medieval soap opera, Gilga strolls over to MC and his partner and drops a bombshell. Switch partners, you two. MC's face probably looked like he had just seen a dragon in a to-do. Why the switch up, captain? No time for questions. Gilga orders everyone to shuffle partners like it's a medieval speed dating event. Confused and slightly terrified, John musters the courage to ask Gilga the golden question, why me? The captain, with a cryptic smile, just challenges him to come at her and showcase his skills. But in the chaos of clashing swords, John's internal monologue is basically a medieval horror movie trailer. He's dead. As MC charges like a knight with a mission, Gilga, in a ballet of avoidance, sidesteps, and bomb, hits him square in the back. Cue the groans of pain, like a medieval chiropractic adjustment. Oh, the rain pouring down like a dramatic backdrop to this medieval showdown. Picture John, sword thrown and dreams shattered, scrambling on the wet ground to retrieve his precious weapon. But hold up, Captain Gilbert kicks the sword away with a swift move, like a rainy day dance move straight out of a sword fighting ballet. With a mix of sass and warrior wisdom, she hits in with the reality check. Do you think enemies will wait for you to pick up your sword? It's like a splash of cold water, only it's raining already. Gilbert's got no time for sword picking niceties. It's a battlefield, not a lost and found, as MC contemplates his swordless existence. Still on the rain-soaked ground, Gilga drops the hammer. I don't need weakling subordinates. Ouch, right in the knightly pride. Undeterred by Captain Gilga's verbal arrows, he decides to take matters into his own hands, or, well, sword. With determination shining like a wet blade, he steps forward, ready to thrust that sword and show he's not just a rain-soaked rug on the ground. But alas, fate has other plans. In a twist that even the best medieval dramas would envy, he gets a good old-fashioned slap right across the face. The sound of swords clanking in the background plays the symphony of his momentary defeat, accompanied by the relentless pitter-patter of raindrops. Now our hero lies on the ground, staring at the wet sky, probably contemplating the life choices that led him to this soggy, slap-filled predicament. The battlefield is a harsh teacher, and today's lesson is served with a side of humility. John, now sporting a few extra bruises, finds himself in the clinic, attended to by the resident old man with a flair for straight talk. The wise healer suggests our hero take a break, but John, in true stubborn fashion, apologizes and spills the beans about his night-long training frenzy. The old man, not one to sugarcoat, calls him a dumbass for getting his rear handed to him. Classic tough love. He reassures MC that the injuries aren't too serious, just the usual battle scars from a tango with Gilga. But wait, the plot thickens. The name Gilulu rings a bell for John, so he fires away with questions. It turns out that the old man and Captain Gilga were war buddies in the Great War back when dragons were still in fashion. And oh, note to self, don't call her Gilulu unless you want a sword in your general direction. The old man drops a bombshell. Captain Gilga, in her temporary gig, hasn't found someone she's been hunting for ages. A mysterious my lord. John's curiosity is piqued, and suddenly, he's not just recovering from sword-induced slaps. He's caught in the web of a mysterious quest for a lordly figure. What a twist in the tale. Our battle-worn MC is told by the old man to catch some Zs, giving his battered body a chance to recover. Meanwhile, the old man steps outside and stumbles upon the sight of Captain Gilga, wielding her sword in the rainy night like a warrior poet. Curious about her nocturnal activities, the old man gently informs her that she's not in the training camp but the clinic. Gilga, undeterred, 
acknowledges that she got the memo, and cheekily adds that she's pleased the old coot turned into a doctor. The old man, being the nosy but caring type, asks why she's hanging out in the clinic. Gilga, being Gilga, dodges the question and claims she's just sword practicing. The old man, not one to be fooled, offers her refuge inside to avoid catching a cold, throwing in a sprinkle of concern for the newbie. Gilga, though, defends her nighttime sword ballet, claiming it's not for love, but for the sheer joy of slicing air molecules. The old man with a smirk mutters to himself about Gilulu, her least favorite nickname, mind you, not changing a bit. Gilga, sharp as her sword, hears him and calls him out by the name Ishim. What a night in the kingdom of Beethoven. Our hero, MC, wakes up from his post-training slumber only to find darkness outside. Through the shadows, he spots a lone figure, and as the pieces fall into place, he realizes it's none other than Captain Gilga. Enter Ishim, the wise old healer, lamp in hand. He unveils the not-so-hidden truth that Gilga, the fearsome swordswoman, had been waiting for John all this time. A captain playing the waiting game? Unexpected, right? Curiosity piqued, John asks the million-dollar question, why would the captain bother waiting for him? Hishim, with the wisdom of someone who's seen more than a few sword clashes, simply replies that it's because MC is now part of her squad. It's no big deal, just the captain's way of saying, welcome to the club. As the lamp casts a flickering light in the room, John wonders if Captain Gilva is mad at him. Ishim, ever the reassuring mentor, brushes off the notion. He spills the truth. Sure, she may look like she bathes in dragon's blood, but deep down, she's someone to look up to. A tough love mentor, if you will. Stepping out into the night, John bravely approaches her, apologizing for dozing off. But Gilga, ever the stoic mentor, assures him she was just practicing, dropping some wisdom about patience and the perils of recklessness. In a twist that hits John's ego like a rogue arrow, Gilda reveals she chose him as a sparing partner because, well, he looked like he could use some help. Ouch, right in the chivalrous pride. John, feeling like the embodiment of disappointment, gets hit with a reality check. But fear not, our aspiring knight, Gilga, while stern, is not without compassion. She reminds John that being a knight isn't just about swinging swords like a windmill in a storm. It's about understanding the opponent. She imparts the ancient wisdom that the true enemy is not the sword but the one wielding it. Eyes wide, MC absorbs every nugget of truth, staring at her like she's the key to unlocking the secrets of the kingdom. In a vulnerable moment, MC confesses his fear of being kicked out for not measuring up. Gilda, surprisingly shy, reassures him. She never meant to kick anyone out, she just wanted to guide the inexperienced. John, our aspiring knight, expresses his gratitude to Captain Gilga for her keen eye and unwavering support. He recounts the tale of her attentive nature, from analyzing knights to personally escorting him to the clinic. The endorsement from Dr. Isham, the clinic sage, only solidified MC's belief in Gilga's worthiness. As MC heaps praise upon her, Gilga, stoic as ever, blushes in a rare display of embarrassment. Deep down, she relishes the acknowledgement, but Captain Gilga, with a sense of duty as vast as the kingdom, shares her commitment to repaying the trust bestowed upon her by the general. She, in no uncertain terms, declares her aversion to weaklings as subordinates. Then comes the symbolic punch to the chest, accompanied by a promise. Gilga, with a gaze fixed on her oath ring, pledges to guide John and the others on the path to becoming exceptional knights. In this oath-swearing ceremony, they commit to doing their best with their tasks and responsibilities. Amidst the camaraderie, MC, ever the observant one, admires Gilga's beautiful ring. Little does he know, it's the sacred oath ring, a symbol of a vow made with a missing lord. The missing royal family mystery unravels, with Gilga's generation's old commitment to serve them coming to light. Gilga, with fire in her eyes and passion in her voice, utters the solemn oath. She declares herself the sword and shield of her missing lord, vowing unwavering loyalty. John, ever the romantic jester, playfully suggests the ring seems like an engagement ring, likening Gilga to a wife to her missing lord. A blush creeps across Gilga's face, and she hastily denies it, leaving a tantalizing air of mystery in the night. Back in the Royal Knights boot camp, the Grey Tigers were sprinting, playing a bizarre game of piggyback rodeo with their comrades. Amidst this chaos, the spotlight of slowness gleamed upon our protagonist, MC. Gilga, multitasking like a pro by observing John and providing her comrade a back kitch, hollered at MC to channel his inner cheetah. Someone get that knight a turbo boost. 
Later, the wise old man, the matchmaker of knightly affairs, approached Gilgo with a proposal more complicated than a knight's love life. He's all about that personal attendant idea, like a medieval tinder match. Gilga, playing hard to get with responsibilities, insisted she was fine solo. But oh no, the old man was on a mission, armed with a direct order from the general. He said that Gilga needed a sidekick to navigate the nightly circus. Welcome to the world of mandatory companionship, Gilga. Caught between a rock and a hard place, Gilga reluctantly inquired if this whole attendant thing was a volunteer gig. The old man, holding the matchmaking scepter, dropped the bomb that they already had a willing sacrifice, a volunteer, Enter the fashionably late arrival, bowing in front of Gilda with a sorry I'm late routine. Surprise, surprise, it was none other than John's Mismi, or should we say, undercover John, the self-appointed captain's shadow. Jude probably thought changing his name was the ultimate disguise. Smooth move, Johns. We see you trying to ninja your way into Gilda's world. Well played, sir, well played. In an attempt to win Gilda over, MC whipped out his resume of super useful skills. Picture this. John, the town's unofficial tour guide, boasting about his intimate knowledge of ancient ruins like the ultimate history buff. And wait for it, he's the Yelp of the medieval world, knowing all the best restaurants in town. Move over Zagat. But that's not all, folks. MC, the domestic wizard, pledges allegiance to laundry, cleaning, and even the rare art of medieval microwave cuisine. He's basically the knight in shining armor with a vacuum cleaner and a spatula. And if that's not enough, He's got Gilga's daily correspondence and necessities under control. Is he an attendant or a one-man medieval concierge service? Gilga, the master of tough love, shot down John's grand offer faster than a dragon dodging arrows. She dropped some wisdom bonds, telling him to focus on self-improvement instead of becoming the town's medieval concierge. Relax, MC, it's okay to have a life outside my laundry basket. Cue the old man, the unsolicited mediator, jumping in like a knight in rusty armor. He played the understanding card, acknowledging that Gilga wasn't thrilled about having someone as skilled as a potato peeler as her caretaker. Someone get that old man a diplomatic medal. Gilga, with her eagle eyes for gloom, noticed John's face looking like a storm cloud. Meanwhile, the old man, never one to quit while he's behind, spilled the beans about John's less than stellar performance review. Ouch. But fear not, Gilga, the diplomatic queen, stepped in. She assured the old man that it was not about satisfaction. It was just unnecessary to roll out the medieval red carpet for her every move. Gilga's got this, folks. She's the knight who can handle her own laundry and emotional baggage. In a rare moment of solitude, Jilva decided it was bath time, because even knights need a spa day. As she poured water over her head, she couldn't escape the whirlwind of meddlers swirling around her life. With a side eye at her oath ring, Jilva pondered life's big questions. Can she truly be the worthy servant her lord deserves? It's a medieval existential crisis, complete with bubbles and deep thoughts. Gilga, the trendsetter in medieval fashion, decided a robe was the perfect ensemble for an outdoor stroll. Suddenly, cue the entrance of a feline friend. This cat, the MVP of the story, approached Gilga like it was auditioning for a medieval petting zoo. Head rubs ensued, and Gilga couldn't resist the adorable vibes. The cat played tour guide, acting like it was the official kitty ambassador of the other side of the wall. Gilda, ever the adventurer, followed the feline pie Piper, leaping over walls and into a realm of mystery. It's like a cat-induced quest, and we're here for it. In a shocking turn of events, Gilda followed the cat into a horror movie set. As she glanced around, the once majestic houses now stood in ruins, as if a medieval Godzilla had a bad day. The crunching sound underfoot added a spooky soundtrack to the scene. To add a dash of irony to the horror, it turned out Gilda wasn't on some epic journey. She was basically stuck in a medieval hamster wheel, wandering in circles like a knightly maze runner. Forget the cat, it's the medieval GPS fail of the century. Gilva then asks herself where she got led to that place when she notices that she is in a barrier. Gilga thinks about the possibility that someone is trying to attack her when suddenly she hears a crunching noise. It is then revealed that it is MC who has a backup in his bag and a lamp in his hands, making him look like he's ready for a month-long camping trip. Looks like John is taking Be Prepared to a whole new level. Someone give this guy a survival show. MC was shocked when the captain called him, but he suddenly noticed that she was just wearing her robe and asked her what was with her getup. But Gilga was more curious about why John was in that place, so MC told her that she never came back, so he decided to go looking for her. Priorities right? 
Gilga was shocked by his reasoning, but for John, he was just telling the truth. Gilga then told him that they were trapped in a barrier and that there might be enemies lurking in every shadow, yet John was there. Gilga then apologized to John for getting him dragged into that situation because he wanted to help her. She also promised that she'd make sure MC came back home unharmed and promised to find a way to get out of there. Classic hero move. Let's hope they make it out in one piece. John, the ultimate boy scout, was more prepared than a squirrel stashing nuts for winter. Concerned about Gilga's thirstiness, he offered water, fearing she might be as parched as a cactus in the desert. Gilga, finally quenching her thirst, accepted with gratitude. But wait, there's more. MC, the chivalrous hero, noticed Gilga shivering in her daring robe. Quick on his feet, he offered a cloak to keep her as warm as a marshmallow over a campfire. Chivalry at its finest, even in the midst of a mysterious situation. As if that wasn't enough, John, the culinary wizard, checked his month-long camping bag. Rumor has it, he had enough supplies to rival a grocery store. Spotting a card game, he suggested a round of entertainment, wondering if Gilga was up for some friendly competition. But in his mind, he hoped she wasn't a sore loser. And then, out of nowhere, history books about View to Win appeared. Nothing says mysterious adventure like a good old history lesson. Gilga, perplexed, questioned the abundance of items packed. MC, with a shrug and a smile, admitted he had no idea what she might need, so he crammed in everything but the kitchen sink. And maybe a kitchen sink if it fits. John, the human pack mule, ready for anything. MC apologized for any inconvenience, blaming his haste in packing. But hey, in a mysterious barrier, you never know when you'll need a card game or a history book, right? And just when you thought John was done, he dropped the bomb about lingering magic from an old war. It turns out that taking the wrong route meant no escape, and magic was about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. But don't worry, everyone in the city, from kids to grandmas, knows the place like the back of their hand. It was originally designed to fend off enemy invasions, not catered to MC's impromptu camping trip. Looks like they stumbled into a magic maze. Good thing John knows the ropes, but let's hope they find the right path and avoid any unexpected detours. In this magical maze where even kids and cats don't lose their way, Gilda found herself in a pickle. Yes, Captain Gilda got lost, and a local feline residence probably raised an eyebrow, or rather raised a paw, in confusion. Feeling a bit like a kitten who wandered too far from home, Gilda blushed with embarrassment. Here she was, a captain, lost in a place where even the neighborhood tabbies knew their way around. But fear not, for MC, the newfound tour guide of the mysterious maze, stepped in to save the day. Who would have thought cats would be the experts in navigating this maze? John chuckled, clearly impressed by the local feline GPS system. But hey, if it works for cats, why not let them lead the way? With a reassuring smile, MC assured Gilva that getting lost was no big deal. After all, not everyone can be as well-versed in magical mazes as the neighborhood cats. Don't worry too much about it, he comforted her, as if getting lost in a maze was just a casual stroll in the park. And then, out of the blue, MC dropped a bombshell of confidence. He declared that from that moment on, he would take care of Gilga. Cue the shock on Gilga's face that she just get herself a personal maze escort. John, the self-proclaimed novice in the realm of magic and mazes, explained his grand plan. If he takes care of Gilga, she can focus on leading the Grey Tiger unit to greatness. Because you know, a well-led tiger is a strong tiger, or at least that's what John believed. In a heartwarming twist, Gilga, moved by John's words, held his hand. She reminded him of the not-so-small detail that he came and saved her. You're not powerless, she declared, proving that sometimes a bit of encouragement can go a long way. With their hands entwined and confidence soaring, they vowed to face the magical maze together. Teamwork makes the dream work, even in magical mazes. Go, Grey Tigers! In the heart of Vuitton, within the confines of the Grey Tiger Unit Barracks, nestled a hallowed sanctuary known as the traditional training hall of the knights. This revered space bore witness to the transformative journey from boyhood to manhood, where aspiring warriors honed the skills essential for safeguarding their cherished kingdom. The air within echoed with the whispers of countless dreams and the clangor of steel meeting steel. It's almost as if the walls have absorbed the essence of every would-be knight, creating a historical tapestry that tells a story of valor, pain, and perhaps a few clumsy missteps along the way. Within the confines of the traditional training hall of the knights stood the newly appointed temporary captain of the Grey Tiger Unit, the formidable Captain Gilda Masamune, a female elf knight of exceptional prowess. 
Her presence alone commanded respect, with an air of elegance that seamlessly blended with the aura of strength that surrounded her. Captain Gilga Masamune was not merely renowned for her ethereal beauty. She was also revered for her absurd strength, a combination that made her an unparalleled leader. As she undertook her daily training regimen, the rhythmic sound of her push-ups reverberated through the hall, a testament to her unwavering dedication to honing her skills. The count, currently at 986, reflected not only her physical prowess, but also the disciplined mindset that defined her leadership. Captain Masamune's push-up count is so high that even the hall's walls must be wondering if they should start doing some push-ups themselves. Maybe they get a bit stronger, or at least less creaky. As MC navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the Grey Tiger Unit barracks, a radiant expression of unwavering determination and pride adorned his face. Having assumed the role of attendance to Captain Gilga, his steps echoed with a newfound sense of purpose. A grin played on his lips, a manifestation of the joy that permeated his being as he made his way toward the captain's room, nestled deep within the barracks. The corridors seemed to hum with the energy of camaraderie and duty, an atmosphere that fueled John's resolve. Serving alongside Captain Gilga was not just a duty, it was a privilege that he embraced with open arms. The thought of contributing, even in the smallest measure, to the captain's endeavors brought a genuine and infectious smile to John's face. As he approached the captain's room, tucked away in the farthest recesses of the barracks, John's commitment shone through. His pledge to give his very best reverberated in the determined set of his jaw and the sparkle in his eyes. Here's to hoping his enthusiasm doesn't wane even if he discovers that the captain's room is the mystical realm of misplaced socks and forgotten armor pieces. In the midst of the barracks, as MC diligently made his way to Captain Gilga's room, an entirely different scene unfolded within. Behind the closed door, Captain Gilga, undeterred by the early hour, engaged in a rigorous exercise routine. Her lithe form moved gracefully, executing leg stretches against the walls and effortless splits that seemed to defy the laws of anatomy. With unparalleled flexibility, she seamlessly transitioned into a handstand, showcasing a level of physical prowess that mirrored her esteemed leadership. As Captain Gilga immersed herself in the flow of her morning exercise, a polite voice interrupted the rhythmic pattern of her movements. It was John standing just outside the room, extending a courteous apology for intruding at such an early hour. Despite being aware that it was the captain's day off, MC's dedication to maintaining respect and consideration shone through in his sincere words. Kudos to John for being considerate. Even the walls might be blushing at the unexpected interruption. Upon receiving the invitation to enter, MC gingerly opened the door, still carrying the weight of his earlier apology. However, as the door swung open, he was met with a sight that caught him entirely off guard. There, in the midst of her morning exercise, Captain Gilda welcomed him with a gravity-defying handstand. Her legs gracefully parted in midair, accentuated by the slim shorts she wore, a spectacle that left John momentarily flustered. The unexpected tableau unfolded before MC's eyes, and he couldn't help but be taken aback by the captivating display of athleticism and poise. Captain Gilga, seemingly unperturbed by the interruption, maintained her handstand with an air of nonchalance. Meanwhile, John, caught in the crossfire of astonishment and an unexpected blush, struggled to find the right words. Who would have thought morning exercises could be this distracting? Apologizing for the interruption, Captain Gilga gracefully descended from her handstand and acknowledged MC's presence. She explained that she was simply engaged in her daily workout routine. Despite the unexpected entrance, John, who had momentarily turned away, expressed his apologies for the commotion he caused, blaming himself for the disruption. In response, Captain Gilga, with a reassuring smile, dismissed the need for an apology. She assured MC that she didn't mind the interruption, stating that there was nothing unsafe to look at. Curious about John's visit, Captain Gilga, still catching her breath from the impromptu acrobatics, inquired about the purpose of his presence. It was then that MC recalled the reason for his visit and informed the captain about the forthcoming gift. General Dutch, it seemed, had plans to provide Captain Gilga with a new suit of armor. Well, it looks like Captain Gilga has the grace of an elf and the cool-headedness of a seasoned leader. Within the prestigious confines of the Phoenix Palace, renowned as the paramount armory in the kingdom, an impressive array of armors lay on display, presenting Captain Gilga with a regal selection to choose from. John, accompanying her on this significant quest, found himself unable to resist the allure of one particular set of armor. His eyes widened with admiration as he gazed upon a piece that he described as reminiscent of the armor worn by the leader of the orcs. 
In awe of the intricate craftsmanship and imposing design, N.C. couldn't help but share his fascination with Captain Gilda. To his delight, the captain not only acknowledged his observation but went on to confirm that the armor in question indeed hailed from the works. The captain recounted the historical context, revealing that during a time when peace was brokered with the Orc tribes, a wise and strategic general initiated a trade that brought this distinct peace into the kingdom's possession. As the captain considered her options, the armors in the Phoenix Palace seemed to resonate with tales of diplomacy, alliances, and the exchange of not just metal, but also the forging of bonds in the name of peace. And here we thought armor was just for protection. Little did we know it's also a statement piece with a diplomatic backstory. Amidst the armory's grandeur, Captain Gilda, immersed in the memories woven into each piece of armor, shared a piece of history with John. She recounted the days of yore when General Dutch, now a seasoned leader, was once a mischievous and rash novice. Expressing gratitude for the suit of armor provided by General Dutch, Captain Gilda conveyed her intention to extend thanks to him. Inquisitive, MC ventured to ask about the nature of Captain Gilda's relationship with General Dutch. With a thoughtful pause, she revealed that they were more than mere comrades. They had fought side by side in the same unit during the tumultuous Orc Wars. Moreover, Captain Gilga disclosed a pivotal detail about her journey, the quest to find her lord that had begun at the war's end. She explained that General Dutch, aware of her quest, recommended her for the temporary captain position. It's like reminiscing about the good old days of youthful indiscretions, but with swords and armor, eager to contribute to Captain Gilga's armor selection, John enthusiastically recommended a full plate armor composed of multiple metal plates meticulously riveted or laced together. As NMC envisioned the potential suit, he couldn't help but emphasize the robust defense the full plate armor could provide. Each metal piece interlocks with the precision of a well-crafted puzzle, promising an impenetrable barrier against adversaries. However, mindful of Captain Gilga's preference for agility and ease of motion, John pivoted his recommendation. Recognizing the need for a balance between protection and mobility, he suggested a design that prioritized lightness and flexibility. The proposed armor would allow the captain to move with agility on the battlefield, ensuring that she could swiftly respond to any threat that may arise. The walls witnessing this brainstorming session might be silently casting their votes for the most stylish armor in the Phoenix Palace. As Captain Gilga's discerning gaze swept over the armory, she felt a magnetic pull toward a particular set of armor. This one, she believed, could be the perfect fit. It exuded simplicity and lightness, suggesting a commendable balance between agility and defense, precisely what she sought. However, just as she contemplated her choice, John's call diverted her attention to another intriguing discovery. A set of armor named the Night Car Armor captivated MC's interest, prompting him to draw Gilba's attention to its unique features. To her surprise, the armor turned out to be not only super light, but also undeniably cute complete with a petite bag designed for essential girl necessities and a stylish cape adorning the upper back. The night car armor seemed to redefine the concept of battle attire. Gilda, momentarily perplexed by the unexpected cuteness, examined the armor more closely. Despite its seemingly delicate appearance, she pondered the possibility of enchantments woven into the fabric, rendering it deceptively robust. The practicality of easy movement and the added convenience of a small bag were appealing, yet Gilga couldn't shake the feeling that the overall aesthetic was a bit too adorable for her taste. The night car armor sounds like it's ready for a fashion show rather than a battlefield. Amidst the armor selection process, a sudden revelation caught John's attention. An inscription on the armor they were examining, clearly designating it as a costume. Captain Gilga, feeling a twinge of disappointment, expressed her wish not to be teased about it. In response, MC, with a reassuring grin, expressed genuine admiration, assuring her that he found the costume both cute and fitting for her. Accepting the unexpected compliment, Gilda agreed, acknowledging the peculiar charm of the costume. As MC pondered the logistics of finding a dressing room, he suggested to Gilga that if anything else caught her eye, she should give it a try. With that, he ventured off in search of the dressing rooms, leaving Gilga alone with the night car armor that had piqued her curiosity. Left to her own devices, Jilga stood before the quirky costume, its cuteness exerting an undeniable allure. Pausing to assess the situation, she cast a furtive glance around, checking if anyone else was present. To her relief, the armory seemed momentarily deserted, and with a mischievous twinkle in her eye, she decided to seize the opportunity. Swiftly grabbing the costume, Jilva disappeared behind a makeshift dressing screen. As she emerged, adorned in the night car armor, 
a mixture of amusement and satisfaction played on her features. The whimsical attire, though unconventional for a captain, seemed to resonate with her sense of humor and adventure. Who knew armor shopping could be this entertaining? As Captain Gilga adorned herself with the various pieces of the night car armor, including the headpiece featuring adorable cat ears, she found herself captivated by her reflection in one of the armor pieces that served as a makeshift mirror. The sight of herself in the whimsical costume left her momentarily shocked, and she couldn't help but sigh, feeling a twinge of shyness wash over her. Caught in the midst of her own reflection, Jilga was startled by the unexpected arrival of John. With a quick and apologetic reminder about the location of the dressing room, John inadvertently discovered her in the midst of trying on the charming night car armor. Gilda's face, now a shade of crimson, betrayed her embarrassment at being caught in this vulnerable moment. As John complimented her appearance, acknowledging that she looked great in the costume, Gilda's embarrassment deepened. The playful allure of the night car armor had transformed her into a reluctant fashion model, and she found herself blushing under the unexpected spotlight. It's like a medieval version of a fashion faux pas turned fabulous, as Captain Gilga and the valiant members of the Grey Tiger Unit ventured forth on their quest. They found themselves standing before a foreboding and eerie tree. Its gnarled branches twisted like the fingers of an ancient specter, and the absence of leaves only added to its mysterious aura. Undeterred by the ominous presence, Captain Gilga took charge, signaling to her comrades that the time had come to proceed. Her voice, firm and resolute, cut through the quiet tension that enveloped the haunted landscape. If only the tree could talk, it might share tales of ancient magic and long-forgotten whispers in the wind. While the gray tiger stood before the ominous tree, MC found himself unable to tear his gaze away from Captain Gilga, resplendent in the armor she had chosen before the allure of the night cat armor. The captain exuded an air of cool confidence that captivated John's admiration, her form a testament to both strength and style. Their quest unfolded as a daunting mission to exterminate the blood-sucking ivy infesting the murky swamp a task that demanded not just valor but a strategic approach to navigate the treacherous terrain. The swamp, a labyrinth of mud and mystery, awaited the Grey Tiger's intervention to rid it of the insidious ivy that threatened to choke the life out of the land. As the company delved into the swamp's depths, MC couldn't shake the unfortunate realization that Captain Gilga's splendid armor was in imminent danger of getting soiled by the clingy mud. Each step taken in the muck seemed to carry the weight of potential stains and smudges, much to John's dismay. Poor MC caught between admiration for Captain Gilga's coolness and the impending mud-related fashion disaster. With determination etched on her face, Captain Gilga issued a reminder to her companions as they stood on the swamp's edge. Her words, a stern call to vigilance, emphasized the importance of ensuring that no harmful pests ventured beyond the murky borders of the swamp. Asteriskas, the gray tigers commenced their assigned task. A cacophony of swinging swords resonated through the air. The warriors attacked the mud with a fervor usually reserved for more menacing adversaries as if the very ground beneath them had transgressed some unspoken boundary. Mud splattered in every direction, an unintended consequence that elicited a chorus of complaints from the disgruntled gray tigers. Amidst the mud slinging melee, Captain Gilda maintained her composure, leading by example as she navigated the swamp with strategic finesse. The landscape transformed into a battleground, with warriors valiantly battling not only the blood-sucking ivy, but also the seemingly sentient mud that clung to their armor and impeded their progress. Who knew that mud could become the unexpected foe in a quest to exterminate blood-sucking ivy? While the gray tigers relentlessly swung their swords to combat the blood-sucking ivy, Captain Gilga, ever the vigilant leader, issued a crucial reminder. Her commanding voice cut through the chaos of mud-slinging, cautioning her comrades not to lose focus merely because their adversaries were plants. She emphasized that within the murky depths of the swamp, hidden among the twisted vines, there lurked other creatures, unseen but no less dangerous. The reminder served as a rallying call to the warriors, urging them to maintain their guard and acknowledge that the swamp held secrets beyond the blood-sucking ivy. With Captain Gilga's caution echoing in their ears, the Grey Tigers continued their dual struggle against both the blood-sucking ivy and the concealed creatures dwelling within the swamp's depths. The swamp adventure just got even more treacherous. John, observing the state of Captain Gilga's once immaculate armor and now mud-streaked cloak, couldn't help but express his concern. In a tone tinged with a mix of regret and humor, he pointed out the irony of acquiring a new armor suit only to find it subjected to the muddy chaos of the swamp. 
The cloak, initially pristine, now bore the unmistakable signs of their endeavors. However, Captain Gilda, displaying a pragmatic outlook, responded with a conviction that tools, including her armor, were meant to be used. Her words carried a sense of acceptance, recognizing that the journey they embarked upon, no matter how messy, required the practical application of their equipment. The armor, though now adorned with swamp mud, served its purpose as a shield against both the blood-sucking ivy and the hidden creatures within the murky waters. In the face of the unforeseen challenges, Captain Gilga's resilience shone through, and her perspective underscored the notion that in the midst of adventure, sometimes getting a little dirty is an inevitable part of the journey. Captain Gilga's philosophy is a practical reminder that in the world of knights and quests, armor isn't just for display, it's for getting the job done, no matter how messy it may be. Among the gray tigers, a knight with shoulder-length hair couldn't contain his frustration, voicing his discontent about the seemingly mundane task of playing weed whacker in the swamp. His disgruntled complaints echoed through the air, questioning why knights of their caliber were relegated to such seemingly menial work. In response, when offered the alternative to supervise the proceedings from the relative safety outside the swamp, the knight clandestinely refused, perhaps harboring a desire for a more adventurous role or simply unwilling to accept a perceived emotion, He opted to stay in the thick of the action, albeit with a simmering discontent. It seems not everyone in the Grey Tigers is thrilled about their current task. The shoulder-length Grey Tiger found himself in a less than dignified predicament as he accidentally slipped into the swamp, coating his hair in a layer of filth. His fellow Grey Tiger, clearly unimpressed with the antics, scolded him for what seemed like playing around instead of focusing on the task at hand. Unfazed by the reprimand, the shoulder-length knight seemed to channel his frustration toward the situation. Blaming Captain Gilga for accepting the swamp mission, he voiced his discontent, firmly asserting that knights of their caliber should be engaged in battles against more ferocious monsters. In his opinion, the dirty work of dealing with the swamp should be relegated to peasants, not esteemed knights. Expressing doubt in Captain Gilga's ability to face formidable monsters, the disgruntled Grey Tiger harbored a wish for her to stumble and witness her armor succumb to the mud, a sentiment that didn't escape the notice of the observant John. The shoulder-length Grey Tiger is not holding back on expressing his dissatisfaction. He's not just resisting the swamp, he's outright protesting the whole assignment. As the swamp quest unfolded, a voice rang out, calling for Captain Gilga's attention. The Sumner claimed to have discovered excrement, suggesting the presence of some creature lurking nearby. Responding to the call, Captain Gilga made her way to the specified location, unaware of the brewing drama nearby. Close by, the shoulder-length Grey Tiger, harboring a less than honorable intention, feigned a sword swing into the mud with the cruel intention of splattering mud onto Captain Gilga. However, before the mud could reach its intended target, MC, with a swift and selfless move, positioned himself as a shield, allowing the mud to cover him instead. Astonished by the unexpected turn of events, MC seized the opportunity to expose the shoulder-length Grey Tiger's ill-intentioned act. With unwavering honesty, he highlighted the attempt to splash mud on the captain. However, the accused knight vehemently denied the accusation, asserting that John had no right to lecture him. He went on to express frustration with what he perceived as John's newfound confidence, deeming it as cocky behavior. The swamp adventure takes an unexpected turn with a splash of mud and a brewing conflict among the Grey Tigers. MC's quick reflexes not only spared Captain Gilga, but also unveiled the shoulder-length knight's less than honorable intentions. In the midst of the confrontation between MC and the shoulder-length Grey Tiger, Captain Gilga, alerted by the commotion, turned her gaze toward them. To her shock, she witnessed the unfolding drama, her two subordinates seemingly locked in a dispute. Sensing that something more urgent demanded their attention, she urgently interjected, revealing the presence of a massive, ominous frog looming behind them. The creature, sinister in appearance and considerably larger than both John and the shoulder-length knight combined, sent a shiver down their spines. Before the monstrous frog could make a move, a sword swiftly pierced the air, stopping just short of its gaping mouth. In a display of remarkable skill and precision, Captain Gilva emerged from the shadows, demonstrating her combat prowess with a decisive strike that silenced the looming threat. With the frog defeated and the danger averted, Captain Gilga, now standing victorious, approached the two knights. In a tone that carried both concern and a hint of admonishment, she inquired about their well-being, emphasizing the importance of maintaining focus in the face of unexpected challenges. 
It was a moment that not only showcased Captain Gilga's combat expertise, but also served as a powerful reminder to those who may have doubted her abilities. If they could cheer, they might be celebrating the triumph of skill over skepticism in the swampy theater of the unexpected. The shoulder-length gray tiger, who had harbored doubts and even wished for misfortune to befall Captain Gilvet just moments before, found himself in a surprising turn of emotions. As Captain Gilga showcased her combat prowess against the menacing frog, the once skeptical knight's demeanor underwent a radical transformation. Now instead of doubt, admiration colored his expression. His eyes widened in awe, and a subtle shade of red graced his face, a reaction that caught John off guard. It seemed the captain's display of skill had not only quelled the doubts but had ignited an unexpected admiration from the very knight who had previously questioned her abilities. Well, 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 Captain Gilga's combat skills not only defeated the menacing frog but also conquered the doubts of a once skeptical knight. Captain Gilga, unfazed by the dynamics that unfolded between John and the shoulder-length gray tiger, addressed the situation with a pragmatic and no-nonsense tone. She made it clear that she neither knew nor cared about the specifics of their dispute nor did she have the time or inclination to delve into the details. In a straightforward manner, she instructed both knights to put the incident behind them and refocus on the task at hand. The swamp adventure demanded their attention and unity, and the captain, always resolute and focused on the mission, steered the Grey Tiger unit back toward their assigned work. The words were a clear reminder that regardless of personal differences, the mission took precedence, and any disagreements should be set aside in the pursuit of their collective duty. Captain Gilga, the voice of reason in the swampy chaos, is steering the Grey Tigers back on track. As the Grey Tigers wrapped up their job in the swamp, a collective effort ensued to rid themselves of the mud and grime that clung to their armor. Captain Gilga, alongside John, joined the ranks in the thorough cleaning process. The once muddied armor and cloaks were now the canvas for diligent knights, determined to restore their appearance to the pristine state it had before the swamp adventure. Amidst the cleanup, John, with a dedicated air, took charge of ensuring Captain Gilga's armor received special attention. Wiping away the remnants of the swamp, he assured her that once they returned to the barracks, he would make it spotless. His promise extended beyond mere cleanliness. He vowed to polish the armor until it gleamed even brighter than it did when they embarked on their mission that day. John, the unsung hero of armor maintenance, is on a mission to make Captain Gilga's armor shine like a beacon of knightly glory. Captain Gilga, with a genuine smile in response to MC's commitment to making her armor immaculate, expressed her anticipation for the revitalized state of her armor upon their return to the barracks. As MC went about completing his cleaning duties, Gilga found herself near an area with particularly good quality mud. Intrigued by the reputed benefits of the swamp mud, known for its skin-nourishing properties, Gilga decided to indulge in a moment of self-care. Aware that even nobles sought out this specific mud for its reputed beautifying effects, she immersed herself in the therapeutic embrace of the mud. As the cool, rich texture enveloped her, she couldn't help but contemplate the possibility of emerging with even more radiant and beautiful skin. In this brief respite amidst the swampy aftermath, Captain Gilga found solace in the natural spa-like experience, envisioning the potential transformation of her skin under the mud's gentle care. Captain Gilga, turning a swamp into a makeshift spa, is the epitome of finding beauty in unexpected places. As Captain Gilga prepared for her duties that day, she reached for a specific cloak that held a distinctive scent. The moment the fabric brushed against her, a familiar fragrance enveloped her senses, triggering a cascade of memories. The scent transported her back to a poignant moment when she had the privilege of meeting her lord. Captivated by the lovely aroma lingering in the air during that encounter, Gilga found herself contemplating the essence that had left such a lasting impression on her. With a curious mind, she wondered about the specific fragrance that had accompanied the meeting, leaving an indelible mark on her memory. In the midst of her preparations and musings, the cloak became more than just a piece of attire. It became a vessel carrying the subtle echoes of a cherished moment, wrapped in the delicate threads of a lingering fragrance. Captain Gilga, weaving memories into the fabric of her daily routine, is on a journey to uncover the mysteries behind a captivating scent. John's shock was palpable as he and Captain Gilga entered the great library of Vuitton. The vast expanse of knowledge that unfolded before them left MC awestruck. Describing the scene, John couldn't help but emphasize the sheer magnitude of the library, with shelves upon shelves stacked high with books, creating a labyrinth of information. Taking a break from their usual training duties, Captain Gilga and MC ventured into the hallowed halls of the library with a specific purpose in mind.
to seek clues related to Captain Gilga's enigmatic My Lord. The air in the library was thick with the weight of centuries of knowledge, and every book held the potential to unveil secrets and answers. As they navigated through the towering shelves, John's eyes widened at the sheer volume of information surrounding them. The library, a repository of wisdom and mysteries, promised the possibility of uncovering the elusive details about Captain Gilga's elusive lord. It's like every book was a potential treasure chest, and John was on a quest to find the golden nuggets of information. Who knew libraries could be so thrilling, right? As Captain Gilga and NC ventured further into the Great Library of Vuitton, their enthusiasm was swiftly met with a stern shove from the librarian, a silent reminder of the sanctity of the library's quietude. Undeterred, Gilga, visibly surprised, expressed her disbelief at the notion of needing formal attire to access the library. The unexpected requirement caught her off guard, challenging her expectations of this repository of knowledge. In response to the librarian's hushed reprimand, John, who was equally unaware of this rule, offered a sincere apology. It turned out to be John's inaugural visit to the library as well, and the unfamiliar regulations underscored the formality and tradition surrounding this esteemed institution. The incident marked a moment of learning for both Captain Gilga and John, highlighting the unique customs and decorum upheld within the hallowed halls of the Great Library of Vuitton. Who would have thought you needed a library pass and a dress code to dive into the sea of knowledge? As Captain Gilga examined the ring adorning her finger, a tangible symbol bearing the House of Astor's family crest, she couldn't help but harbor a glimmer of hope. The intricate design etched into the ring held the promise of potential clues about her mysterious lord. With a silent wish, she turned her gaze towards the vast expanse of knowledge housed within the Great Library. Expressing her desire to unearth information about the Astors, Captain Gilga conveyed her expectations that the library might hold the keys to unraveling the enigma surrounding her lord. In response, M.C., ever the optimistic companion, reassured her. He acknowledged the library's reputation as a repository that gathered books from far-reaching corners of the world, instilling confidence that they would likely find something pertinent to the Astors. With determination in their hearts, Captain Gilga and John embarked on their quest within the hallowed halls of the Great Library, hopeful that the answers they sought lay hidden among the countless pages waiting to be explored. Captain Gilga's got her detective hat on, hoping a family crest could spill the beans about her mysterious lord. It's like a medieval version of a DNA test, but with a ring. MC, in a moment of admiration, couldn't help but express his appreciation for Captain Gilga's attire. He emphasized how her outfit exuded a remarkable sense of coolness, particularly when she stood tall, rendering her cloak gallant and awe-inspiring. The genuine compliment, however, had an unexpected effect. Captain Gilga, caught off guard, blushed momentarily, Swiftly dismissing the remark, Captain Gilga urged MC not to make such ridiculous statements, redirecting the focus to the task at hand. With a practical demeanor, she reminded him of the importance of getting accustomed to formal wear, suggesting that it was a skill he needed to cultivate as well. John, taking it in good spirits, laughed off the moment and assured Captain Gilga that he would do his best to adapt to the formal attire. The exchange highlighted the camaraderie and lighthearted banter between Captain Gilga and John. Even in the midst of their quest for knowledge in the library, MC tried to be all smooth and compliment Captain Gilga's fashion game. But she blushed like a medieval rose. As John delved into the history of the Astors, he couldn't help but inquire about the head of the family from Gilga's recollections. In response, Captain Gilga, her gaze momentarily distant, began to paint a vivid picture of the esteemed head of the Astor family from days gone by. She described the head of the family adorned in a magnificent cloak, a regal garment crafted from shimmering silver. The cloak, she recalled, was not just a piece of attire, it was a symbol of authority, perfectly suited to the commanding presence of the family leader. Gilda reminisced about the warmth that emanated from the cloak, as if it held the very essence of comfort and how it carried a captivating, pleasing fragrance that lingered in her memory. As she shared these details with John, there was a palpable sense of nostalgia in her voice, suggesting that the recollections transported her back to a time when the head of the Astor family was a figure of reverence and warmth. Medieval reminiscing at its finest. MC, with a sly smile and a mischievous glint in his eye, decided to throw a curveball into the conversation by posing the million-dollar question. Whether the head of the Astor family was Gilga's first love? The unexpected query caught Captain Gilga off guard, and her initial shock was evident. Fumbling for words, Gilga, perhaps surprised by the directness of the question, hesitated in her response. She stammered, explaining that it wasn't a matter of love, 
attempting to clarify the nature of her feelings. Before she could delve further into her explanation, she abruptly cut herself off, urging John to cease his line of inquiry and labeling it as ridiculous. Swiftly changing the subject, Captain Gilga redirected their focus to the task at hand, suggesting that they split up to search for clues. The momentary diversion from the personal question added a touch of humor to the atmosphere, leaving the lingering question of Gilga's sentiments unanswered. Captain Gilga's not spilling the medieval tea on her feelings, on to the next clue. As Captain Gilga and John delved into the labyrinthine corridors of the Great Library, the shelves towering with books, the quest for clues became a meticulous exploration. Navigating through the vast sea of information, they sought answers that might unveil the mysteries surrounding the Asters. Later, Captain Gilga found herself outside the library, contemplating the challenge they faced in deciphering the elusive clues. Seated in quiet reflection, she pondered the difficulty of the quest, realizing that the answers wouldn't be easily uncovered within the vast repository of knowledge. As she dozed off in the serene surroundings outside the library, Gilga was greeted by the beauty of the garden. The delicate petals from the vibrant flowers danced in the air, carried by the gentle breeze. Each petal, like a fleeting thought, found its way to Gilga's spot, creating a picturesque moment amidst the quest for knowledge. The petals danced around her like tiny thoughts, adding a poetic touch to the mystery-solving adventure. Who knew deciphering secrets could be so flowery? In a moment of quiet reflection outside the great library, the gentle petals of the garden's lavender flowers invoked memories from Gilga's past. The scene transported her back to a day when she, just a child, had the chance encounter with the head of the Astor family. In that cherished memory, the head of the family presented her with a cloak, the very garment that had become a symbol of warmth and comfort for Captain Gilga. As the lavender petals adorned the background, the head's thoughtful gesture unfolded. Giggling with joy, Gilda felt the cloak enveloping her, a simple yet profound act that left a lasting imprint. Apologizing for the unintentional interruption, the head of the family acknowledged the importance of warmth to the young Gilga. The cloak carrying the soothing scent of lavender fascinated her. Inquisitive about the meaning behind the fragrance, Gilga sought an explanation. The head, with wisdom only found in those who appreciate the language of flowers, shared that lavender in the floral lexicon held a special significance. It meant, I will wait for you. In that innocent exchange, a bond was formed, and the essence of lavender became a promise that lingered in Captain Gilga's heart. The garden becomes a canvas for the brush strokes of memory, painting a poignant scene from Captain Gilga's past. As Captain Gilga immersed herself in the recollection of the lavender-scented memories, she felt an uncanny resemblance between the fragrance of the garden and the one that lingered in her past. Lost in thought with her eyes closed, she allowed the aromatic symphony to weave through her senses. Upon opening her eyes, Captain Gilga was met with a surprising sight, John standing right in front of her, tenderly draping a cloak over her shoulders. The cloak, a silent gesture reminiscent of the cherished memory with the head of the Astor family, held a quiet warmth that transcended the boundaries of time. In this unexpected moment, the garden's beauty, the scent of lavender, and MC's thoughtful action converged, creating a tableau that echoed the essence of promises made and bonds formed. A subtle yet profound gesture bridges the past and the present. Caught off guard by Captain Gilga suddenly opening her eyes, John, wearing a look of surprise, apologized for what he considered an uncharacteristically shameless act. His intention, however, was rooted in a genuine concern for her well-being as he noticed the visible signs of exhaustion etched on her face. In response to John's apology, Captain Gilga, with her characteristic grace, apologized for momentarily dozing off, acknowledging the weariness that had likely taken its toll on her. Expressing her gratitude, she thanked MC for the thoughtful gesture of draping the cloak over her shoulders. In this exchange of apologies and gratitude, a quiet understanding unfolded between Captain Gilga and John, emphasizing the camaraderie that transcended formalities. Who knew a cloak could be the hero in a wake-up drama? With a considerate gesture, MC, ever attentive to Captain Gilga's needs, offered to fetch some food. Asking if she would like to eat, he volunteered to go out and make the purchase. Captain Gilga, appreciating the thoughtful offer, replied with a simple okay. As John prepared to step out to procure the sustenance, Gilga, still wrapped in the warmth of the cloak he had placed on her, couldn't help but acknowledge the comfort it provided. In this moment, the simple act of offering food became a reflection of the bond and care that existed between John and Captain Gilga. Who knew snacks could be so heartwarming? Two months had swiftly passed since MC took on the role of Captain Gilga's attendant, and in that span of time, 
he had gradually grown accustomed to the unique dynamics of his position. However, there was one aspect that stood out starkly. Captain Gilga's training sessions were nothing short of rigorous. The training grounds echoed with the sounds of clashing swords and the determined footsteps of the Great Tiger Unit. Captain Gilga, driven by an unwavering commitment to excellence, held nothing back during these sessions. Her commands were sharp, her expectations high, and the intensity of the drills was enough to make even the most seasoned warriors break a sweat. They say Captain Gilga's training is so tough that even the swords beg for mercy. Amidst the clang of swords and the rhythmic dance of sparing partners, Captain Gilga, ever the vigilant instructor, directed her attention toward MC. Their blades met in a symphony of steel, but her focus wasn't solely on the clash of weapons. With a commanding presence, she reminded John that in the art of combat, there was more than meets the eye. Don't fixate only on the sword, she advised, her voice cutting through the intensity of the sparring. There's a multitude of factors to consider in battle. Your opponent's movements, their stance, the ebb and flow of the fight. It's not just a physical dance, but a mental one as well. As John absorbed her guidance, he realized that Captain Gilga's training extended beyond the physical aspects of combat. It was a holistic approach that emphasized strategic thinking, adaptability, and the ability to read the nuances of a confrontation. It's not just about swinging swords, it's about the delicate art of outsmarting your opponent while gracefully pirouetting through the chaos. In the midst of the sparing grounds, Captain Gilga, ever vigilant, noticed that MC's attention had momentarily strayed to his co-sparing partners. With a playful yet affirming smack on his shoulder, she redirected his focus, a tactile reminder that she was closely observing his every move. Encouraged by what she had seen, Captain Gilga, with a playful glint in her eyes, requested John to execute 100 practice swings. Amidst the drills, Dr. Aishim, a silent spectator on the sidelines, observed the interplay between Captain Gilga and NC. His discerning eyes carefully traced the nuances of their training, perhaps contemplating the growth and dynamics of this unique mentor-attendant relationship. Did you see that smack? It's Captain Gilga's way of saying, you're on the right track, as Captain Gilga gracefully maneuvered through the training grounds to secure a better vantage point for observing the Grey Tigers, Dr. Ishim, keenly attuned to the dynamics at play, approached her with a quizzical expression. His question hung in the air, a subtle inquiry about the playful yet impactful smack delivered to John during the sparing session. In response, Captain Gilga, with a confident demeanor, explained her rationale. He's been making a lot of improvements, she conveyed, a testament to the attentive eye she cast upon her attendant's progress. Dr. Aishim, the ever-observant figure on the sidelines, absorbed her response, perhaps recognizing the nuances of mentorship and camaraderie woven into the fabric of the Grey Tiger Unit's training sessions. In the realm of Captain Gilga's training, even the questions are like strategic maneuvers. Dr. Aishim, ever the tactician, expressed his skepticism about the effectiveness of the smack as a form of communication. To prove his point, he opted for a more indirect method to convey a message to John. The subtle exchange unfolded as MC continued his swordplay, and Captain Gilga observed the scene with curiosity. Caught in the crossfire of this cryptic communication, John, unaware of the indirect message being conveyed, found himself staring intently at Captain Gilga, attempting to decipher the unspoken cues. Unbeknownst to him, the feet on his face spoke volumes about the earnestness with which he pursued the instructions given by Dr. Aishim. Dr. Aishim, the master of subtlety, turns the training grounds into a cryptic arena of communication. With a touch of insight and a dash of wisdom, Dr. Aishim continued the conversation, expressing his certainty that in the wake of the indirect message, MC might have misconstrued Captain Gilga's intent as anger. The subtle nuances of communication on the sparing grounds often carried unintended interpretations. Captain Gilga, quick to clarify, assured Dr. Ishim that her purpose was not to convey anger, but rather to offer encouragement. Yet Dr. Ishim, perhaps a connoisseur of changing times, suggested a shift in approach. In the present, he recommended that Captain Gilga adopt a more approachable demeanor, advising her to speak to the Great Tigers with a smile. Furthermore, he couldn't help but compliment the infectious quality of Captain Gilga's smile, subtly hinting that displaying it when praising John could serve as a potent motivator. Who knew smiles could be a powerful motivator on the battlefield? Captain Gilga, adept at steering conversations away from potentially intricate discussions, gracefully sidestepped further dialogue with Dr. Aishem, acknowledging the ongoing training session as her priority. She tactfully expressed her commitment to the immediate responsibilities at hand. With a firm yet polite tone, she informed Dr. Hishim, 
I'm in the middle of the training. I'll try to speak with John afterward. As she returned her focus to the ongoing drills, the unspoken understanding lingered in the air. Commitment to address matters at the appropriate time. Medieval multitasking at its finest. In the quiet confines of a room, Captain Gilga found herself contemplating the absence of N.C. It was a routine for him to offer his company when she was about to leave, a gesture that had become almost synonymous with the end of their shared duties. Yet on this particular day, as she inquired with the other gray tigers about his whereabouts, an unexpected revelation unfolded. To her surprise, the response from her comrades carried a sense of urgency. John had to go home quickly that day. The departure from the usual routine left Captain Gilda momentarily taken aback, pondering the circumstances that had prompted his swift exit. When duty calls, even the most reliable attendants might have to make a swift exit. In the intimate moments of undressing, Captain Gilga found herself caught in a reflective reverie. The vulnerability of the private space allowed her thoughts to drift towards the challenges of effective communication as a leader. The weight of responsibility settled on her shoulders as she contemplated the idea that an inability to convey intentions could be a significant hurdle for a captain. As each garment was carefully removed, the realization that praising the growth of her subordinates was essentially dawned upon her. The absence of such acknowledgement could be perceived as a substantial shortcoming in her role as a leader. It became evident to Captain Gilga that fostering an environment where achievements were celebrated was integral to the well-being and morale of the Grey Tiger unit. Who knew getting out of armor could lead to such deep thoughts? In the tranquil embrace of her room, Captain Gilga, having settled onto her bed, found herself struck by a sudden burst of inspiration. A gleam of excitement sparkled in her eyes as she hurriedly made her way to a nearby chest. With swift and determined movements, she retrieved a cosmetics box that she had acquired, unable to resist its allure owing to its admirable appearance. As the lid of the box parted, a subtle symphony emanated from within, accompanying the revelation of a mirror that caught the ambient light and threw it back in a dazzling display. The unexpected bonus of music added an enchanting touch to the scene, transforming the act of opening a cosmetics box into a delightful and sensory experience. Captain Gilga, the connoisseur of cute and sparkly things, turns a simple cosmetics box into a magical treasure chest. In front of the mirror, Captain Gilga embarked on a whimsical journey of self-discovery, her fingers delicately exploring the contours of her face as if trying out an unfamiliar art. The focus of her attention, however, transcended mere vanity. It was an attempt to master the art of delivering praise with a beautiful smile, specifically dedicated to John and his commendable progress. With an air of awkward determination, she began the delicate practice of smiling while verbalizing words of encouragement. Yet a lingering feeling of discomfort prompted her to reassess. Gilda, ever attuned to details, speculated if her unruly hair might be obscuring the intended effect. A ribbon, previously untouched but deemed adorable, found its purpose as it delicately tamed her locks. The mirror reflected a transformation in progress. Undeterred, Captain Gilda reached for the subtle allure of lipstick, adding a touch of vibrancy to her countenance. To complete the ensemble, she adorned herself with earrings, each piece a testament to the intersection of practicality and aesthetics. Captain Gilda, the avant-garde stylist, transforms the mirror into a stage for the art of self-presentation. Now adorned in a complete ensemble that juxtaposed her strong and dependable exterior, Captain Gilga gazed back at her reflection with a mix of amusement and curiosity. The contrast was undeniable. The fierce leader, known for her strength, appeared like a spirited child, a brat who fiercely guarded the territory of her personal space. It was a visual paradox, a blend of strength and innocence. Resuming her practice, Captain Gilga, with all the trappings of cuteness, found herself grappling with an age-old question. How does one muster a smile that feels entirely natural? The mirror, though a patient observer, held no immediate answers to the enigma of genuine and effortless smiles. As she continued her self-styled tutorial, Captain Gilga, a captain in command but a seeker in this particular quest, pondered the intricacies of a smile that transcended mere physical expression. A genuine smile comes from the heart, not just the lips. Despite her earnest efforts and whimsical experimentation, Captain Gilga found herself at an impasse in deciphering the secrets of a natural smile. The complexities of expressing warmth and encouragement through facial expressions eluded her, leaving the captain with a sense of bemusement. However, the following day, as she strolled down the hallway, a pleasantly unexpected encounter awaited her. The familiar figure of MC appeared with a demeanor of gratitude and respect. Without hesitation, he bowed in a display of appreciation, 
expressing heartfelt thanks for the guidance she had unknowingly bestowed upon him the day before. In this unanticipated moment, Captain Gilga, in pursuit of a genuine smile, witnessed the genuine gratitude in MC's gesture. Perhaps the authenticity she sought was not confined to a mirror, but found its true resonance in the connections forged with those she led. Genuine smiles aren't just reflections in a mirror. They are moments forged in authentic connections with those she leads. John, carrying the weight of an assumed transgression, approached Captain Gilga with a mix of apprehension and contrition. In a sincere admission, he revealed that he believed the captain to be upset with him. However, the unexpected twist came as he shared Dr. Ishim's revelation. Gilga had, in fact, been praising him for the strides in his training. Surprised by this revelation, John found himself caught in the undertow of conflicting emotions. Apologizing earnestly for the misunderstanding, he confessed that the impression of Captain Gilga's anger had clouded his perception, overshadowing the subtle nuances of praise woven into the fabric of their training session. John, the unwitting recipient of praise, realizes that decoding the captain's expressions is no easy feat. Captain Gilga, ever the epitome of humility, gracefully acknowledged her own lapse in communication. The wisdom imparted by Dr. Aishim resonated deeply, making her realize that, as a captain, the responsibility extended beyond actions to the clear articulation of thoughts and emotions. With a sincerity that echoed through the corridor, Captain Gilga admitted her oversight to MC. She emphasized that it was she who was in the wrong for not vocalizing her praise and gratitude for his progress. The commitment to rectify this shortcoming became a solemn promise as she declared that, moving forward, she would ensure her expressions found clarity in words. The true strength of a leader lies not just in actions, but in the power of spoken words. Captain Gilga, seizing the moment to address another lingering question, inquired about John's absence from her office on the previous day. The revelation that Dr. Aishim, the perennial meddler, had intervened and advised John to wait a day before approaching the captain added an unexpected layer to the unfolding narrative. MC, with a wry smile, shared Dr. Aishim's unconventional wisdom, suggesting that such an approach worked best with the captain. The revelation elicited a mix of shock and amusement from Gilda, who, in good spirits, commented on the doctor's penchant for meddling, humorously noting that Aishim had been at it since the day John was born. In the end, she just laughed it off together with MC as Captain Gilga realized that it was also her fault for not being more approachable or predictable in her responses. This shared laughter served to lighten the atmosphere, bridging any potential tension, and strengthening the camaraderie between them. John fidgeted with a hint of anxiety, unable to contain the nervous energy bubbling within. He decided to confide in Captain Gilga, who, with a stern demeanor, inquired about the source of his unease. In response, John admitted that it was in anticipation of meeting General Dutch for the first time. On this particular day, they had received an invitation to the General's private residence, creating an air of mystery and anticipation. The purpose of the meeting seemed to revolve around a matter concerning Captain Gilga's title as the Lord of the Astor family. Meeting generals can be nerve-wracking. Maybe General Dutch will surprise them with a magic trick or reveal a secret fondness for rubber duckies. The revelation triggered a memory for MC, who recalled that the captain and General Dutch shared a deep history. As it turns out, they were once part of the same military unit, bound by experiences that echoed through time. Unveiling a surprising connection, it was revealed that General Dutch, in his earlier years, was an orphan. During this vulnerable period, Captain Gilga extended a caring hand, taking the young Dutch under his wing and providing a semblance of familial support. From battlefield comrades to an unexpected foster family dynamic, war stories often weave intricate threads of camaraderie and compassion. Captain Gilga, the unsung hero of both the battlefield and babysitting duties. While strolling, the duo received a summons from General Dutch, a renowned Vuitton hero celebrated for his mastery of the sword. Whispers of his gallantry were often accompanied by rumors of philandering, adding a layer of intrigue to his persona. Upon their arrival, General Dutch expressed genuine joy at Captain Gilga's presence in his residence. The formalities unfolded as Gilga and MC introduced themselves, prompting the general to suggest a more casual tone, abandoning the rigid honorifics in favor of a relaxed atmosphere. Who knew war heroes could also be connoisseurs of chill vibes? Upon settling into the conversation, Gilga couldn't help but express her disbelief at the transformation of the once lonely and tearful boy on the battlefield into the esteemed rank of a general. Overflowing with genuine joy, she conveyed her happiness at the prospect of spending time together as friends. In response, General Dutch, 
perhaps with a hint of nostalgia, remark that Gilda had remained unchanged throughout the years. War may bring change, but true friends stay timeless. Gilda's observant eyes couldn't overlook the disheveled state of the general's shirt, a messy detail that escaped no notice. The rumors surrounding his philandering ways also reached her ears, but rather than broaching the topic directly, she chose a different path. Not missing a beat, General Dutch, seemingly deflecting with a touch of humor, responded by noting that his so-called big sis hadn't really changed. The bigger question might be whether his fashion sense is as adventurous as his battlefield tactics. As the conversation transitioned to its intended purpose, General Dutch summoned his maids, setting the stage for the unveiling of the reason behind their gathering. With an air of anticipation, the maids orchestrated a grand presentation, revealing a painting that held the collective attention of the room. In the masterpiece before them, an elven woman graced the canvas, her presence captivating and regal. Notably, the Astor family crest adorned one of her delicate fingers, a subtle but significant detail that drew the eyes of those present. As John's gaze lingered on the painted hand, a sudden realization dawned upon him, an emblem that mirrored the Astor family crest, the same symbol proudly displayed by Captain Gilga. Who knew a painting could be the canvas for unveiling family secrets? Art appreciation just took a turn for the mysterious. The revelation about the origin of the captivating painting unfolded with a casual air as General Dutch shared the circumstances of his discovery. It appeared that the intricate threads of fate had led him to stumble upon this intriguing piece of art during an unrelated investigation in the closed stacks of the Great Library of Vuitton. In response to this revelation, MC couldn't contain his surprise and blurted out that they, too, had recently visited the same impressive library. The serendipitous intersection of their paths within the labyrinthine archives of knowledge added an uncanny layer of connection to the unfolding mystery. The library staff probably has a whole shelf dedicated to unexpected reunions. In a moment of genuine sincerity, General Dutch extended an apology for his lack of knowledge concerning the painting's age or origin. Despite this admission, Captain Gilga found solace in the mere presence of the artwork within the confines of Vutoin. Her optimism flickered to life as she envisioned the possibility of unraveling more clues and pieces to the puzzle that enshrouded the identity of the elven woman. While the eyes of the room remained fixed on the captivating painting, Gilga, the keen deductive prowess, began to weave a narrative around the enigmatic figure on the canvas. Her discerning gaze traced the contours of history leading her to surmise that the woman depicted likely served the House of Aster, a revelation that added layers to the unfolding mystery. As Captain Jilva delved into her deductions, her attention shifted to the exquisite details of the woman's dress, appreciating not just the strokes of the artist's brush, but also the intricate beauty woven into the fabric of history. Who knew a painting could be a gateway to both mystery and couture admiration? Fashion detectives assemble. A twist of surprise wove its way into the unfolding narrative as General Dutch, in a gesture as unexpected as the enigmatic painting itself, proposed the idea of Captain Gilga donning the dress depicted in the artwork. The revelation that he had taken the initiative to have the garment recreated left Gilga visibly shocked. Her usually composed demeanor momentarily shaken by the unexpected offer. Undeterred by any hesitation, General Dutch boldly announced that his maids were ready to assist Gilga in trying on the historically significant dress. In response to this proposal, Gilga, ever the pragmatist, cautioned the general against leaping too swiftly into this uncharted territory. As the room hung in anticipation, the direct question about wearing the dress pierced the air, prompting Gilga to grapple with a mix of shyness and the need for mental preparation. Gilga, take your time. Fashion decisions are serious business, especially when they come with a side of unexpected generosity. Observing the subtle cues that hinted at Captain Gilga's inclination toward donning the recreated dress, General Dutch wasted no time in taking decisive action. With an air of playful determination, he directed his maids to assist Gilga in the process of getting dressed, turning the unexpected proposal into a tangible reality. As the maids prepared to weave the fabric of history around Captain Gilga, General Dutch, in a tone laced with jest and a hint of firmness, issued a warning. He playfully cautioned Gilga that resistance might incur a humorous yet serious consequence, court-martial. The juxtaposition of levity and authority added a touch of camaraderie to the unfolding scene. When fashion meets military threats, General Dutch's strategy involves both style and a touch of disciplinary humor. Court-martialed for resisting address, the stakes just got fashionably high. Concern etched on his face, John couldn't resist expressing his worry for Captain Gilga to General Dutch. 
In response, the general, wearing an amused smile, dismissed the concern with a reassuring tone. He assured MC that Gilgus' hesitance was merely a testament to her less than honest nature, a playful jab at the captain's stoic demeanor. Meanwhile, the maids, ever efficient and unfazed by the unfolding drama, initiated the process of undressing Gilga. Their reassuring words were like gentle breezes, encouraging her to relax and trust in their capable hands. The juxtaposition of concern, reassurance, and the impending dress fitting created a moment of both tension and camaraderie. The maids are the unsung heroes, turning wardrobe changes into a therapeutic experience. Fashion therapy, anyone? The air crackled with anticipation as the moment everyone had been waiting for finally arrived. With expressions of gratitude, the maids signaled the completion of their task, and there she stood, Captain Gilga, a vision of elegance adorned and breathtaking dress that mirrored the enigmatic woman from the painting. The room suspended in a moment of silent awe, bore witness to the stunning transformation. The shock on the faces of General Dutch and MC was palpable, etched with a blend of surprise and admiration. Overwhelmed by the sheer beauty of the moment, John couldn't contain his genuine admiration, praising Gilga for her stunning appearance. His words, a heartfelt acknowledgement of the captain's elegance, hung in the air. In response, Gilga caught between bashfulness and playful deflection, urged John not to tease her. Yet for John, the sentiment was genuine, an unfiltered expression of pure admiration for the radiant captain in her unexpected regal attire. Who knew a dress could leave everyone lost for words? Fashion critiques eat your hearts out. John, the astute detective, pointed out the significance of the remaining painting, deducing that the woman must have been well-loved. However, as Gilga's mind processed this information, it took an unexpected turn. A playful and imaginative scenario unfolded, with Gilga envisioning herself and her lord dancing in the elegant dress. In this whimsical moment, she promised herself that one day, she too would experience being well-loved. Who knew a dress could inspire such delightful flights of fancy? May the dance of love be as graceful as that twirl in a beautiful gown. In a genuine display of admiration, General Dutch praised Gilda, expressing disbelief at how stunning the dress looked on his sis. Taking the admiration a step further, he suggested gifting the dress to her. In response, Gilda, averse to the idea of receiving an expensive gift, dismissed it as preposterous. The general, however, downplayed the significance, stating that it was nothing more than a gathering of loose change scraped together to create something special. Loose change or not, a dress fit for a painting is no small feat. In response to the suggestion of making similar dresses for the general's special someone, Jilga showcased her caring nature. This triggered a poignant memory for General Dutch, transporting him back to his childhood when he was alone and in tears. In that vulnerable moment, Jilva appeared like a guardian angel, inquiring about his troubles. Undeterred by the unknown, she insisted that the young Dutch accompany her, convinced that his tears might be a sign of hunger. Gilga, the true fashionista, turning tears into tailor-made solutions, childhood tales, where friendship blossoms in the most unexpected moments. Upon hearing his big sis express gratitude, the general responded with a warm smile. In a quiet moment to himself, he acknowledged that he indeed had the dress made with a special someone in mind. As the time to part ways arrived, Gilda conveyed her sense of indebtedness to the general for the day's unexpected turn of events. However, for General Dutch, it was no problem at all, affirming that he would do anything for his beloved sis. Here's to the heartwarming simplicity of familial connections. As the farewell to General Dutch approached, MC suggested returning to the Great Library. With their goodbyes underway, the trio executed formal greetings, bowing their heads in a respectful salute. Observing this familiar gesture, General Dutch couldn't help but reflect on the consistency of his big sis, convinced that she hadn't changed a bit. The Great Library awaits, where knowledge and nostalgia intertwine. Captain Gilga and the Grey Tigers found themselves embroiled in an investigation of colossal proportions as they examined the massive footprints scattered across the scene. Gilda, displaying her keen deductive skills, speculated that the footprints indicated the presence of two or three individuals. The discovery took a more ominous turn as they stumbled upon the chaotic aftermath of out-of-control horses, their prints revealing a scene of horses dragging a collapsed carriage in an overpowering manner. The gravity of the situation sent shockwaves not only through John, but also through the entire Grey Tigers unit. Horses on a rampage and a carriage in distress, sounds like a case for the elite equestrian investigators. The investigation unraveled a menacing truth. The culprits behind the chaos were none other than trolls lurking within the confines of a cave. 
the Grey Tiger Unit's mission for the day crystallized. Exterminate the troublesome trolls. Recent times have witnessed a surge in troll attacks on carriages traversing the highways bordering Vutoin, prompting orders for the Grey Tigers to quell the threat and restore safety to the travel routes. Trolls are causing highway havoc, a not-so-welcome twist in the daily duties of the Grey Tiger Unit. Time to sharpen those swords and prepare for a cave showdown. With torches ablaze, the Grey Tigers, a resolute unit, advanced into the cavernous depths of what was once a foreboding cave. The echoes of their determined footsteps reverberated in the darkness, dispelling the shadows that clung to the rocky walls. Their collective mission was clear, to confront and eliminate the lurking trolls that had disrupted the tranquility of the cavern and restore a sense of peace to its depths. As the flickering flames cast dancing shadows on the uneven terrain, the unit moved forward with a sense of purpose. The cavern, once a realm of impenetrable darkness, now bore witness to the unwavering resolve of the Grey Tigers. The torchlight painted an ephemeral tapestry, revealing glimpses of stalactites hanging like chandeliers and stalagmites rising from the cavern floor like silent sentinels. The cave might have been dark, but the Grey Tigers are about to bring a blaze of justice to its depths. In the dimly lit cave, frustration wove its tendrils around Captain Gilga as the trolls' wanton destruction thwarted a personal affair. A package intended for her home lay undelivered, ensnared in the crossfire of the troll's chaotic rampage. The cavern's echoes seemed to carry the weight of this inconvenience. Beside her, John, ever attuned to the captain's concerns, acknowledged the predicament with a knowing nod. The undelivered package stood as a testament to the troll's disruptive presence, a hindrance to the smooth flow of Gilga's personal affairs. Yet despite the shared acknowledgement of the inconvenience, both MC and Gilga understood the paramount importance of the mission at hand, to exterminate the troublesome trolls and restore order to the cavern. Time to turn frustration into determination and raid that cave. May the package find its way home amid the chaos. In an unexpected turn within the cavern's depths, John stumbled upon a revelation that sent shockwaves through the Grey Tiger unit. The once muted echoes of their footsteps were replaced by desperate cries for help reverberating off the cave walls as the team discovered a group of people ensnared within cages. The gravity of the situation was etched on John's face, mirroring the collective shock that gripped the unit. The captives, their voices carrying the weight of desperation, urgently implored the Grey Tigers to expedite their rescue. Their fearful pleas revealed a harrowing truth. They were on the precipice of becoming the trolls' next meal. The torchlight, once a beacon of determination, now flickered amidst the shadows, casting an uncertain glow on the unfolding crisis. The Grey Tigers have a rescue mission on their hands. Time to turn the tables and make the trolls the ones in cages. Captain Gilga, with a steely gaze, took stock of the dire situation unfolding within the cavern. Seeking clarity, she inquired about the identity of the captives, suspecting a connection to the carriages associated with the mission. The confirmation came swiftly, as one of the confined individuals acknowledged that they were, indeed, the merchants tied to the carriages. However, the revelations took a darker turn as the captives painted a grim picture of their plight. The trolls in their chaotic rampage had not only ensnared the merchants, but had devoured their horses, leaving the stranded group at the mercy of the treacherous cavern. The gravity of their predicament echoed in the cave, a haunting resonance beneath the stalactites and stalagmites. May the sword of justice swiftly cut through the bars of captivity. Amidst the ominous echoes of a menacing growl resonating through the cavern, Captain Gilda, undaunted, swiftly issued a stern command to the Grey Tigers, prepare for battle. The urgency in her voice cut through the oppressive atmosphere, prompting the unit to ready themselves for the impending confrontation with the lurking trolls. The torchlight flickered with heightened intensity, casting shadows that danced upon the cave walls as if mirroring the impending clash. In a parallel urgency, the trapped merchants, gripped by desperation, insisted on immediate rescue despite the looming threat. Their pleas formed a counterpoint to the impending battle, creating a symphony of tension within the cavern. The torches, now both weapons and beacons, illuminated the grim determination etched on the faces of the Grey Tigers as they faced the impending challenge. As the Grey Tigers and the captive merchants stood on the precipice of uncertainty, the cavern itself seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the clash that would determine the fate of those ensnared in the labyrinthine darkness. The cave's secrets unfold with every growl, demanding the Grey Tigers' unwavering resolve. From the shadows, the trolls, with their towering and intimidating presence, emerge, casting a palpable sense of dread over the Grey Tigers. The cavern, once echoing with uncertainty, now bore witness to the formidable adversaries that lurked within its depths. 
In response to the troll's imposing appearance, Captain Gilga, the embodiment of unwavering resolve, swiftly readied her helmet, assuming a stance of preparedness that mirrored the gravity of the situation. As the unit stood momentarily stunned by the troll's presence, Captain Gilga, the epitome of leadership, took charge. Her voice, a beacon of command, cut through the cavern's silence, urging the Grey Tigers to calm themselves and remember their training. With measured authority, she instructed them to maintain a strategic distance and encircle the trolls, a tactical maneuver designed to counter the looming threat. Time to dance with trolls, but keep those steps strategic and at a safe distance. Captain Gilga, strategizing on the fly, emphasized a cautious approach. Those at the front were instructed not to attack, but rather draw the trolls' attention. MC, quick to follow orders, took on the role of a distractor, engaging one of the trolls. Meanwhile, exploiting the blind spots, other Grey Tigers launched attacks, aiming strategically for the trolls' legs. The coordinated assault caused one of the trolls to stumble, revealing the effectiveness of their calculated tactics. Gilga, the tactician, orchestrates the moves, turning a chaotic encounter into a strategic dance. Keep those trolls on their toes, literally. Captain Gilga, demonstrating her leadership, emphasized a strategic approach. No need for deep cuts, just whittle the trolls down without getting flustered. The Grey Tigers executed the plan with precision, resulting in a successful skirmish. As smiles of triumph spread among the unit, Captain Gilga, ever vigilant, ordered them to fall back. However, a sudden twist unfolded as one of the trolls, enraged, swung its massive weapon, unintentionally striking and blowing away one of its own kind. Sometimes, a little friendly fire can be the unexpected plot twist in a cave encounter. Seizing the opportune moment created by the troll's unintentional strike, Captain Gilga capitalized on the element of surprise. With a daring move, she soared through the air, stunning the troll, and swiftly delivered a slashing blow to one of its arms. With the momentum on their side, Captain Gilga rallied the Grey Tigers, urging them to capitalize on the troll's vulnerability and press the attack. The cave becomes a battleground of tactics and turmoil. With the battle's conclusion, the Grey Tigers emerged victorious, standing atop the defeated trolls. Captain Gilga, raising her sword high, set the tone for a triumphant moment. In unison, the members of the unit mirrored her gesture, a collective display of joy and satisfaction at overcoming the formidable challenge posed by the trolls. Trolls defeated, camaraderie intact, and Captain Gilga, the emblem of leadership, a battle won, a celebration earned. MC dutifully reported to the captain, highlighting that while there were some minor injuries among the Grey Tigers, overall, everyone was okay. The aftermath of the battle led to a self-reflective moment within the unit, acknowledging the strength they had gained and attributing it to Captain Gilga's leadership. Amidst the discussions, a particular individual with shoulder-length hair grinned, expressing genuine happiness at the victorious outcome, deeming it a job well done in the name of a knight. A knight's job indeed, with grins and glory in the aftermath. As the merchants assessed the aftermath of the battle, frustration set in as they discovered the wreckage left in the troll's wake. The once intact carriage and cargo lay in ruins, seemingly tossed around like mere playthings by the formidable trolls. The trolls' chaotic rampage spared only the alcohol and food, scattering everything else. However, a silver lining emerged. The chests containing their valuable possessions remained more or less intact amidst the chaos. In the end, the Grey Tigers may have won the battle, but the aftermath reveals the toll of the trolls' tumultuous visit. Observing the merchants sift through the wreckage of their belongings, Captain Gilga seized the opportunity to inquire if there was any package addressed to her among the items. The merchants, upon searching, were fortunate enough to find one with her name on it. Excitement tinged with a hint of blush painted Gilga's expression as she received the package. John, witnessing the captain's joy, couldn't help but share in the happiness, curious about the contents concealed within the wrapped surprise. The mystery unfolds and the Grey Tigers witness a different kind of victory. Personal joy in the midst of battlefield remnants. In the privacy of her home, Captain Gilga reveled in the joy of the moment, humming to the music as she adorned herself with the underwear received in the package from the merchants. The happiness radiated from her as she marveled at the craftsmanship, unable to contain her praise for the human artisans who crafted such exquisite items. Praise to the humans, whose skills extend beyond the battlefield to bring joy to a victorious captain. Captain Gilda, adorned in her new underwear, admired the creativity of humans. The design, featuring a bear transformed into something cute, left her impressed. She marveled at the ingenuity of taking a ferocious creature 
and turning it into an adorable design. In her musings, she acknowledged that elves, like herself, might not have considered such a whimsical and creative approach. Who knew bears could be so adorable? Even in the world of warriors, Captain Gilga, in a playful jest, joked about the bear from her underwear having an appetite for her. Succumbing to the comfort and undeniable cuteness, she eventually found herself on her bed, thoroughly enchanted by the adorable design. Who says battles in bedtime can't be equally delightful? Sweet dreams in bear-themed comfort. The triumphant clash against the trolls marked a turning point for the Grey Tiger unit, earning them a well-deserved three-day holiday as a token of appreciation for their valor. The cavern's echoes once filled with tension now resonated with a celebratory spirit as the unit reveled in their victory. For Captain Gilga, this holiday held special significance. It was her first opportunity to leisurely explore the city of Vuitton since her arrival. With the weight of responsibilities momentarily lifted, she set out to immerse herself in the sights, sounds, and flavors of the vibrant cityscape. A warrior's respite in the heart of the city awaits. Vuitton, a jewel within the Vuitton kingdom, unfolded its charms before Captain Gilga as she strolled through its bustling streets. Blessed with abundant water sources and thriving river trade, the city stood as a testament to prosperity and vibrancy. The echoes of its bustling life, intertwined with the sounds of river commerce, created a harmonious melody that resonated through the air. Captain Gilga, in her resplendent armor, became a captivating figure amid the lively scenes of Kuvutoin. As she meandered through the city's vibrant markets, the tantalizing array of fruits and goods beckoned her attention. The air carried the fragrance of exotic spices and the lively chatter of merchants conducting their trade. The residents of Kuvutoin, recognizing the heroic captain in their midst, couldn't help but shower her with genuine praise for her captivating beauty. Whether it was the gleam of admiration in their eyes or the subtle whispers that followed her path, Captain Gilga became a living legend traversing the heart of Kuvutoin, a moan of respite amid the bustling prosperity of Kuvutoin. Captain Gilga's natural beauty, already captivating, found itself elevated against the unique backdrop of Kuvutoin. The city, a melting pot of various species beyond humans, boasted a vibrant diversity that added to its allure. However, among this rich tapestry, the rarity of elves in Kuvutoin made Gilga's presence truly stand out. In a city where the streets were adorned with myriad colors of different species, from the stout dwarves to the ethereal elves, Gilga's elven grace became a rare gem. The contrast between her elegant stature and the bustling, diverse crowd emphasized her uniqueness. It was as if the city itself paused to admire a living myth. The elven captain, a symbol of strength and beauty, gracing Kuvutoin with her presence. A rare gem in the eclectic tapestry of Kuvutoin. In a sudden encounter, an adorable girl child approached Captain Gilga, pointing out her pointy ears. The child, curious and innocent, remarked on the ear's unique shape. In response, Gilga graciously sat down to match the child's height, inviting her to touch the distinct elfin ears. As the child's small fingers brushed against Gilga's ear, she asked the captain if she could hear well, a gentle touch and a question about hearing, bridging the gap between species with a simple gesture. Assuring the curious child, Captain Gilga shared that her keen ears allowed her to hear exceptionally well. She even revealed the ability to wake up early, guided by the distant crowing of the first cocks in the mountains. The child, amazed by this revelation, was caught up in the enchantment of Gilga's unique senses. Suddenly, the child's mother rushed over, apologizing for her daughter's actions. Gilga, however, dismissed any concerns, expressing genuine fondness for the adorable child. Ears attuned to nature and hearts attuned to innocence, a delightful encounter in Kavutoin. After the heartwarming encounter with the child, Captain Gilga's attention was drawn by a mysterious voice calling her. Following the sound, she found herself in a place veiled by curtains. Peering through, she discovered an old woman cloaked in mystery. The elderly figure, with a sense of foreboding, questioned if Gilga had deviated from her destined path and requested permission to read her fortune. What secrets might the fortune hold for the elven captain? Intrigued by the mystical allure of fortune-telling, Captain Gilga, though aware of its perceived lack of precision compared to precognitive magic, decided to venture into the realm of divination. Unperturbed by potential inaccuracies, she found herself drawn to the enchanting prospect of glimpsing into her own destiny. With a sense of curiosity, she approached a fortune teller, ready to unravel the secrets that the future might hold for her. The fortune teller, adorned in flowing robes and surrounded by an assortment of arcane tools, welcomed Captain Gilga with a knowing smile. Seated comfortably, Gilga prepared to embark on this mystical journey, 
her fate to be revealed through the ethereal lens of a crystal ball. A moment of anticipation as the crystal ball takes center stage. In the dimly lit room, the fortune teller's words wove a narrative that seemed to resonate with Captain Gilga's innermost thoughts. With an air of mystique, the fortune teller revealed that a lingering sense of unrest had been shadowing Gilga, an unspoken quest to find something that would bring fulfillment to her heart. Though surprised by the accuracy of the revelation, Gilda remained composed, mindful of the inherent ambiguity in fortune telling. As the mystic continued to unveil the cryptic threads of destiny, Captain Gilga listened attentively, her skepticism mingling with a growing curiosity. The fortune teller's words hinted at a journey filled with trials and challenges, prompting Gilga to reflect on the tumultuous path she had treaded in her pursuit of answers. Despite the intrigue, she maintained a level-headed approach, acknowledging that the mystic arts often spoke in elusive truths. The mysteries of the future unfold in the most unexpected ways. In the mystical haze of the fortune teller's words, a peculiar revelation unfolded, a silhouette of a mighty beast lurking in Captain Gilga's future. The fortune teller, with an air of cryptic wisdom, spoke of latent power and untapped strength within Gilga, evoking a vision of a formidable creature entwined with her destiny. As the mystic continued to peer into the unseen Gilga, though intrigued, couldn't shake the lingering skepticism that accompanied her. Internally, Gilga mused that the fortune teller's visions might be a mere reflection of her formidable warrior status. The glint of her sword and the aura of strength she exuded could easily be interpreted as a connection to a powerful entity. Amidst the mystical atmosphere, Captain Gilga grappled with the balance between belief and skepticism, navigating the thin line between destiny and mere observation a dance between the mystical and the mundane in the fortune-telling session. In the continuing tapestry of mystical revelations, the fortune-teller unraveled a curious detail. There was a large black animal positioned at Gilga's back. As Gilga speculated, envisioning a wolf in her mind's eye, the fortune-teller, with an air of certainty, corrected her. It was not a wolf, but a bear that stood as the enigmatic guardian at her rear. The mention of a bear sparked a momentary freeze in Gilga's demeanor, a mixture of surprise and contemplation. As the fortune teller's words echoed in her ears, Gilda couldn't help but wonder if the old woman somehow had insight into the bear design adorning her underwear. A fleeting thought crossed her mind, questioning whether the mystic glimpsed beyond the layers of cloth to reveal the symbolic creature. However, she quickly reassured herself, realizing that, fortunately, she wasn't sporting the bear-themed undergarments on that particular day. The mysteries deepen as visions unfold. Unfazed by Gilda's mental dissection of the bear revelation, the fortune teller maintained the unwavering certainty of her mystical insights. Despite Gilga's thoughts veering towards the plain white underwear she donned that day, the mystic persisted in her assertion about the presence of a bear at the elf's back. As the session drew to a close, the fortune teller, with a final piece of cryptic counsel, urged Gilga to venture westward. The promise of good news in that direction lingered in the air, leading Gilga to ponder the enigmatic guidance that had unfolded in the mystic's makeshift divination chamber. Westward she goes, anticipating the promised good news on the horizon. Frozen mid motion, Captain Gilga's sharp, elven eyes fixed on John as he stammered through the revelation. The pause in her swordplay mirrored the suspense that gripped the air. Intrigued, she urged MC to share the contents of the letter. John, battling the nerves, conveyed the newfound knowledge about the House of Aster. General Dutch had uncovered historical records, suggesting that the house had connections to an ancient elven civilization. The revelation hinted at a deeper layer to the House of Aster's legacy, and Gilda's expression subtly shifted, betraying a mix of surprise and anticipation. The suspense builds like a well-crafted tale, with each revelation opening new doors to the past. As General Dutch relayed crucial information, he revealed the discovery of ruins in the western Butewing Plateau that might be connected to the House of Aster. The mention of the western region triggered a memory for Gilda, echoing the fortune teller's guidance about heading west for good news. Onward to the western horizon, capitalizing on their time off, John suggested to Gilga that they embark on a journey to western Butoan. Expressing his familiarity with the area, he offered to be her guide, emphasizing its proximity to his home. An adventure beckons, and the Grey Tigers prepare to unveil the secrets hidden in the plateau's embrace. Grateful for John's offer, Captain Gilga appreciated the gesture but asserted that the matter was her personal business. She also expressed concern that John might prefer to use his day off for personal activities. However, John, devoted to his role as the captain's attendant and intrigued by the House of Aster's proximity to his home, insisted that he would love to accompany her. 
onward to Western Vutoin, where personal and shared destinies entwine. In the dimly lit barracks, Captain Gilga and MC engaged in the meticulous task of packing for their journey. Gilga's mind, usually focused on the practicalities of her role, now wandered into the realm of uncertainties. The fortune teller's words lingered, creating a subtle shift in perspective. As they gathered supplies, the weight of anticipation mingled with the clinking of armor and the rustle of parchment. Gilga, a warrior accustomed to the tangible challenges of battles, found herself facing an intangible quest, one that led westward, guided by cryptic insights. The air in the barracks crackled with a sense of departure, both physical and metaphysical. The anticipation builds like the suspenseful melody of an unwritten symphony. In the tapestry of her imagination, Captain Gilva found herself in a surreal encounter with the elusive head of the House of Aster. The surroundings were adorned with an otherworldly glow, as if the very fabric of reality had been woven with threads of dreams. In this fantastical realm, the head, a figure of regal poise, expressed a sense of anticipation. With a gesture both tender and mysterious, the head reached out, lightly touching Gilda's chin as if to unveil the depths of her soul. The ethereal moment resonated with a silent understanding, an acknowledgement that their destinies were intricately interwoven. The head spoke of a future where Gilda would stand steadfastly by his side, offering unwavering support. In the dreamlike vision, Gilda's heart swelled with gratitude and excitement. The prospect of standing shoulder to shoulder with the head filled her with a sense of purpose and belonging. Blushing in the glow of this surreal encounter, she eagerly awaited the revelation of the good news that lay hidden in the West. Will reality mirror this dream, or will the journey bring unexpected twists to Captain Gilga's quest? The dance between imagination and reality takes center stage. As Captain Gilga and MC embarked on their journey to the Western Vutoin Plateau, the landscape unfolded before them like a vast canvas painted with the hues of anticipation. Gilda's thoughts echoed the dual resonance of the fortune teller's words and General Dutch's discovery. The West, a realm of promise, held the potential for unveiling the mysteries surrounding the House of Aster. With each step on the winding path, Gilga's mind became a repository of hopes and expectations. The fortune teller's cryptic guidance lingered, a beacon pointing towards the possibility of good news concealed in the West. Alongside this mystic foretelling, General Dutch's revelation about ruins tied to the House of Aster added a layer of intrigue to the unfolding journey. Will the West unfold the secrets that have eluded Captain Gilga for so long? The path ahead is paved with the echoes of destiny, waiting to be unraveled. In the midst of the ancient ruins, John's excited shout pierced the air, drawing Captain Gilga's immediate attention. With anticipation coursing through her veins, she rushed to the spot where John stood, hopeful that this discovery might finally shed light on the mysteries surrounding the House of Aster. However, as her eyes fell upon the symbol etched into the stone, disappointment clouded her expression. A juxtaposition unfolded before her. The cherished crest on her ring, a symbol of her quest, and the enigmatic marking on the weathered wall. Gilda, ever the astute observer, recognized the similarities but couldn't ignore the subtle differences that set them apart. It was a poignant moment, a fleeting glimpse of hope replaced by the realization that this particular symbol was not the key to unlocking the secrets of the House of Aster. The plot thickens and the mysteries deepen. The raindrops cascaded around them, a somber backdrop to the disappointment that lingered in the air. Captain Gilga, standing beside John, gazed at the symbol on the ancient wall with a mixture of emotions. Despite the setback, an understanding smile graced her lips as she turned to her loyal attendant. In the hushed pattern of rain, she shared a moment of vulnerability with MC. It's not related, she declared, her voice carrying the weight of past disappointments. Yet in that admission, there was no bitterness, only a resilient acceptance of the challenges that defined her quest. Seeing the unspoken concern in John's eyes, Gilda reassured him with a smile that held both strength and vulnerability. Disappointment is a familiar companion on this journey, she confessed. The rain continued its gentle descent, bearing witness to the captain's unwavering determination in the face of setbacks. The rain, a silent witness, echoes the ebb and flow of hope and disappointment in this quest for truth. The rain persisted, a relentless companion on their journey, as John suggested a change of course. With disappointment lingering in the air, Gilda considered the proposition. The rain clasped in her hand symbolized not just a quest but a personal odyssey, one that transcended the boundaries of duty and touched the depths of her heart. In the soft cadence of rain, she nodded in agreement. Let's go, she said, her voice carrying the weight of both determination and a touch of weariness. The decision to divert their path, 
guided by the suggestion of MC, brought a subtle shift in the atmosphere. The duo turned away from the ancient ruins, their steps carrying them towards the unseen horizon. The rain, a silent witness, mirrored the rhythm of their journey, a dance of resilience in the face of uncertainty. Side by side, Captain Gilga and MC ventured towards the ridge, where the promise of John's hometown awaited, offering a different kind of solace amidst the rain-soaked landscape. Under the persistent rain, Gilga and John continued their journey toward John's town, finding the path shrouded in darkness. Arriving at an inn named the Night Spoon Mizmi's Inn, MC called out to his mother, announcing his return home. Homecomings and hospitality await in the warmth of an inn's embrace amid the stormy night. John's mom, amidst her innkeeping duties, was taken aback by the sudden appearance of her son. Cleaning the inn, she expressed her surprise as John apologized for the unannounced visit. Despite the reunion, the mom couldn't help but assert that a letter would have been a more considerate way to plan a visit. A touch of humor in the spontaneity of family reunions, as Gilva began to apologize for the late-night intrusion and started explaining her personal business, MC's mom, with a sly smirk, interrupted her mid-sentence. The innkeeper couldn't resist teasing MC for bringing an elf girl along. However, John promptly intervened, proudly revealing that the elf in question was none other than Gilga, the captain of his unit. The revelation of Gilga's captaincy brings a twist to the scene, and the inn becomes a backdrop for unexpected introductions. Observing the damp condition of the two visitors, John's mom proposed a dip in the hot spring to shake off the wetness. John chimed in, boasting about the town's famous therapeutic baths. Despite Gilga's polite decline and expressing a desire for relaxation without the hot spring, John's mom had other plans. With a sudden push, Gilda found herself propelled towards the hot spring against her initial intentions. Hot springs and unexpected plunges, an unpredictable twist in the night's escapade. Amidst the warmth of the spring, Captain Gilga found solace in the soothing waters that enveloped her. The gentle steam rising from the spring mixed with the cool evening air, creating a serene atmosphere. As she settled into the natural hot spring, the weariness of their journey seemed to melt away. The moonlight cast a tranquil glow, and Gilva extended her hands toward the crescent moon that hung in the night sky. The reflections of the celestial body shimmered on the water's surface, dancing in harmony with the ripples created by her movements. Lost in her thoughts, Gilva gazed at her ring, the emblem of the House of Aster, glinting in the moonlight. The hot spring offered not just physical relaxation but also a moment of reflection. She spoke softly to herself, a vow carried by the quiet breeze and the rustling leaves. Even if I didn't find any clues this time, I'll find them next time. I won't stop until I uncover the mysteries surrounding my lord. The rhythmic sound of water and the rustle of leaves embraced her words, becoming part of the night's symphony. In this serene moment, surrounded by nature's wonders, Captain Gilga forged a silent pact with the moonlit night. Will the next journey unveil the elusive clues she seeks, or will it lead to yet another chapter in the tale of Captain Gilga's pursuit? As they strolled towards the inn, the gentle patter of raindrops created a soothing backdrop to their conversation. Captain Gilga, wrapped in the borrowed attire from John's mother, expressed her gratitude for the use of the clothes. MC, with a modest smile, shared that the garments belonged to his mother in her younger days and were surprisingly fitting for the captain. With the ambience of the rain-kissed evening, MC inquired about Gilga's experience in the hot spring. Her response carried the essence of the revitalizing soak, describing it as very refreshing. The natural warmth of the spring seemed to have washed away the fatigue from their journey. Taking a moment to express concern, John candidly admitted that he approached Gilga out of genuine care. Will this journey uncover not only the mysteries of Gilga's past, but also the threads weaving their present camaraderie? Amidst the gentle rustling of the wind and the rhythmic patter of raindrops, Captain Gilga took note of the pleasant breeze. John, sharing in the appreciation of the weather, concurred with a nod. The wind carried a sense of calm, a subtle symphony blending with the ambience of their conversation. Curious about John's background, Gilda expressed surprise at discovering that his home was an inn. In response, John unveiled the rich tapestry of his family's history. The inn, a long-standing tradition passed down through generations, had weathered the sands of time. A tinge of melancholy colored John's narrative as he shared that his father had passed away a decade ago, leaving his mother to carry the torch of the family business. Despite the challenges, John's mother resiliently steered the inn, preserving the legacy established by their ancestors. Meanwhile, John's older sister played a pivotal role in the family's aspirations. She dedicated herself to studies in a neighboring town, aspiring to take the reins of the inn once their mother retired. 
It was the support from his sister that paved the way for John's journey to become a knight, a testament to the interconnectedness of family ties. At least John's sister is aiming for insanity in the neighboring town, one diploma at a time. Amidst the nostalgic ambience of MC's hometown, Captain Gilga sees the moment to inquire about the catalyst that ignited MC's fervent desire to become a knight. In response, John unraveled the threads of his childhood, weaving a tale anchored in the artifacts of the past. Surrounded by the antiquated allure of old weapons and armor stored within their family's repository, John's youthful imagination took flight. The glint of steel and the resonance of ancient tales fostered dreams within him to don the mantle of a knight, standing unwavering against adversity. The storehouse, a treasure trove of historical relics, became the crucible in which MC's aspirations were forged. In a poignant revelation, M.C. disclosed that the emblem adorning the inn sign, a symbol etched into the door, bore the crest of his knightly ancestors. The legacy of knighthood ran deep in his family's veins, and the very emblem that graced the inn's entrance served as a visual testament to their storied lineage. Bet Gilbe wished his childhood home had more than just a dusty collection of sea shanties. In the quietude of John's ancestral inn, the revelation of his knightly lineage hung in the air, casting a delicate veil of humility upon him. As the raindrops continued their rhythmic dance outside, John's admission of feeling shy in the shadow of his illustrious ancestors unveiled the vulnerability beneath his armor. However, in the gentle glow of the inn's interior, Captain Gilda dispelled the shroud of embarrassment, enveloping MC with words that resonated like a knight's oath. To her, the essence of knighthood lay not solely in prowess or pedigree, but more profoundly, in the nobility of one's soul. The flickering flames in the hearth seemed to dance in agreement with Gilba's wisdom, casting warm shadows on the walls. In a moment of sincere encouragement, Gilba underscored the significance of John's kind heart, a quality she deemed indispensable for the arduous path of a knight. She urged him not to measure his worth solely by the shadow of his ancestors, but to embrace the unique light that illuminated his own journey. As John absorbed these words, a newfound confidence seemed to blossom within him, much like a resilient bud pushing through the soil after a nourishing rain. The rain-soaked journey back to the city held an air of contentment as MC and Captain Gilga retraced their steps from the ancestral inn. The rhythmic pattering of raindrops seemed to echo the light-hearted footsteps of the duo, leaving behind the tranquility of John's hometown. As they bid farewell to John's mom, whose warmth and hospitality lingered like the afterglow of a fleeting sunset, a sense of gratitude enveloped the parting moments. The inn's inviting hot springs, mentioned in the parting words, promised the prospect of future relaxation and camaraderie, a haven to be revisited in times to come. In the midst of their return journey, Gilga's heart swelled with quiet happiness, irrespective of the elusive clues she sought. The holiday, wrapped in the warmth of friendship and shared stories, had become a cherished interlude, a respite from the usual rigors of knighthood. Only time will unveil the next chapter in their unfolding journey. John's mom, with a mix of surprise and curiosity, held the pendant aloft, examining the emblem of the House of Aster that adorned it. The delicate intricacies of the crest mirrored the one proudly worn by Captain Gilga, a serendipitous discovery in the clutter of ancestral artifacts. A cascade of thoughts flooded MC's mom's mind, questions, uncertainties, and a sudden realization that the seemingly ordinary pendant held a connection to the enigmatic House of Aster. As the rain continued its gentle cadence outside, an unexpected link between MC's family inn and Captain Gilga's quest unfolded within the walls, poised to unravel secrets veiled by time. What tales of the past lie dormant within the inn's walls, and how will this newfound connection influence the unfolding narrative? The Grey Tiger unit trudged through the outskirts of Vuitton, navigating the challenging terrain of a village nestled near a fast-flowing river. The water's current proved formidable, creating a testing ground for the knights. Each member of the unit bore an additional burden on their backs, amplifying the challenge of walking against the swift stream. The river's waters, fueled by the recent rain, surged with a determined force, making every step a struggle. The gray tigers, with their armor and added weights, faced the dual challenge of maintaining balance against the water's resistance and the burden on their backs. The village's surroundings echoed with the clinks of armor and determined grunts as the knights pressed on, honing their strength and resilience in the face of adversity. As they forge ahead against the current, the training becomes a metaphor for the resilience required in the life of a knight. Despite the recent disappointment in her quest for clues about the House of Aster, Captain Gilga found solace and rejuvenation in the hot springs. 
The days that followed witnessed a revitalized captain, her spirit seemingly lifted by the therapeutic waters. As she resumed her duties, Dilga's demeanor exuded a newfound energy. Eager to maintain the momentum, Captain Gilga took the opportunity to reinforce the importance of the Grey Tiger's training. Addressing the knights, she reminded them that the challenges they faced at the outskirts of Vutoin's residential area were merely a prelude to the rigorous demands of real combat. In a firm but encouraging tone, she emphasized that knights were expected to carry even heavier provisions in actual battles, requiring them to be prepared for more strenuous conditions. The hot springs, it seems, have not only refreshed her body but also invigorated her leadership spirit. Amidst the challenging training scenario with the fast water current, John found himself struggling to keep afloat. The relentless flow threatened to overwhelm him, and just as it seemed he might succumb to the current, a strong hand reached out and pulled him to safety. Gasping for breath, John found himself face to face with a fellow gray tiger, who offered a stern yet supportive reminder to pull himself together. Water training is no joke, and it seems someone was there to make sure he didn't take an unplanned dive. With a single powerful hand, Captain Gilga effortlessly rescued MC from the turbulent waters, earning admiration from the gray tigers who witnessed the feat. The description Buff Elf seemed to capture their awe at her strength. After the rigorous training, Gilga found a moment of respite, bathing herself in the well to wash away the challenges of the day, a well-deserved break after intense training. Gilga's sharp, elven eyes surveyed the bustling activity among the gray tigers. The soldiers seemed to be preparing for an event of significance. As the curiosity danced in her eyes, MC stepped forward, a grin playing on his face. He shared the news with Captain Gilga. The Grey Tigers were gearing up for a local festival in a nearby village. The mere mention of a festival stirred a flicker of interest in Gilga's stoic demeanor. Turning to John, she posed a simple yet decisive question. Do you wish to attend as well? Her tone, though measured, carried a subtle openness to the idea of partaking in the festivities. The prospect of a break from their routine training seemed to resonate with both curiosity and the potential for a momentary respite. Even a battle-hardened captain needs a break from time to time. Festivals can be a battlefield of a different kind after all. As the duo entered the vibrant festival grounds, the night enveloped them in a tapestry of colors and lights. The air was filled with the infectious energy of laughter and joy as colorful fiesta banners fluttered overhead. The warm glow of lanterns illuminated the lively scene, casting a soft radiance on the festivities below. The aroma of various street foods wafted through the air, enticing both Gilga and John to explore the culinary delights of the festival. The sound of merry music and the rhythmic beat of drums blended seamlessly, creating a lively soundtrack to the celebration. Children, their faces adorned with excitement, darted around, reveling in the enchanting atmosphere. Captain Gilga, typically composed and focused, couldn't help but be swept away by the enchanting ambience. Her description of the scene as lovely hinted at a rare glimpse of appreciation beneath her stoic exterior. Even a battle-hardened captain can appreciate the magic of a festival, who knew the warrior could find wonder in fiesta lights. The lively invitation from the other gray tigers resonated through the festival grounds, drawing Gilda and MC into the heart of the celebration. As the group gathered, the prospect of indulging in some drinks became the topic of discussion. Captain Gilga, ever mindful of her responsibilities, gave a nod to the idea of enjoying some drinks but emphasized the need to exercise moderation. Her words carried a hint of authority, a reminder that even in the midst of festivity, discipline should prevail. The Grey Tigers, accustomed to the captain's formidable presence in battle, engaged in banter about the unthinkable notion of Gilga losing control that night. The idea sparked amused chuckles among the soldiers, creating a lighthearted atmosphere in the group. Who would have thought the captain's command extends to both the battlefield and the festival grounds? As Captain Gilga and NC navigated through the vibrant festival, the captain couldn't help but express her appreciation for the human knack for creating spaces to unwind. She lauded humans for their ability to fashion environments where people could release the tensions of daily life and enjoy moments of respite. Gilga's admiration for human ingenuity was evident as she marveled at the colorful decorations, lively music, and the overall festive ambience. Her words carried a genuine sense of acknowledgement for the positive aspects of human culture, and John found himself nodding in agreement. Looks like even the mighty captain finds solace in the simple joy of a good festival. As MC pointed out the Gorgon Tombola, a nostalgic glint sparkled in his eyes. He reminisced about the days of his childhood, sharing with Captain Gilga his fond memories of the thrilling game. 
The concept of pulling the right snake cord to win prizes and facing punishments if luck didn't favor you amused him. The allure of the game wasn't lost on Captain Gilda, who observed the colorful array of snake cords dangling enticingly. The top prize, a gleaming silver saber, beckoned as a tempting reward for those daring enough to try their luck. MC, with a hint of excitement, contemplated trying his hand at the Gorgon Tumbola once again, a game that turns every pull into a gamble, even for our fearless captain and her trusty attendant. Captain Gilga, initially hesitant, couldn't resist the allure of the adorable cat-like prize that had caught her eye. The prospect of winning such a charming reward swayed her decision, and she decided to give the Gorgon Tumbola a shot. As John encouraged her adventurous spirit, Gilda approached the game stall with a determined expression. She paid for a try, and John, eager to see her luck unfold, cheered her on. With a nod of assurance, John instructed Gilga to give any cord a firm tug, setting the stage for the whims of fortune to play their part. A cat-themed prize can melt even the toughest warrior's heart. Let's see if luck favors the captain in this whimsical game of chance. Captain Gilga, after giving the Gorgon Tumbola a try, found herself on the unfortunate end of the game. The vendor declared that she had pulled a Gorgon ticket, signaling her loss. According to the rules, a peculiar punishment awaited her. She had to drink a concoction of dubious contents. Undeterred by the setback, Jilba demonstrated her resilience by gulping down the punishment without hesitation. John, providing a bit of insight into the common nature of such festival punishments, informed her that experiencing a drink so disagreeable it could make one's body as stiff as a board was part of the quirky tradition. A true warrior faces even the strangest challenges with grace. The Gorgon Tumbola, where drinks become dares, undeterred by the previous unpleasant experience, Captain Gilga's determination flared anew as her eyes locked onto the adorable cat prize. Despite the nearly nauseating punishment she had just endured, the allure of winning that cute feline trinket proved too strong to resist. Much to John's surprise, Gilga resolved to give the Gorgon Tombola another shot, showcasing an unexpected enthusiasm for the whimsical game. Looks like even a fierce captain can't resist the charm of a cute cat prize. Undeterred by the consecutive losses, Captain Gilga found herself facing another round of punishment with a determined spirit. Her face already flushed from the previous drinks, she insisted on giving the Gorgon Tumbola one more try. MC, surprised by her persistence, agreed, pondering the age-old saying that the third time might indeed be the charm for the captain. They say the third time's a charm, but can it hold true even in the whimsical world of Gorgon Tumbola? The captain's determination knows no bounds. Undeterred by the unsuccessful attempts, Captain Gilga persisted in her quest for the coveted cat prize at the Gorgon Tumbola. With each loss, the alcohol-infused punishment took its toll, painting her cheeks a rosy hue. The Grey Tigers, amused by her determination, watched the captain's relentless pursuit. The vendor, recognizing the elf's resilience, marveled at the uncommon endurance displayed by someone of her kind. As the attempts continued, John, realizing the nature of the punishment, stepped in to persuade Gilga to call it quits. Unaware of the alcoholic content, MC urged her to abandon the pursuit. Yet Gilga, fueled by a mix of competitive spirit and perhaps a bit of inebriation, insisted on having another go at the game. Looks like the captain is determined to conquer the Gorgon Tombola, even if it means battling both the odds and a growing buzz. In her intoxicated state, Captain Gilga unexpectedly revealed a softer side as she declared her desire for the cute cat prize. The Grey Tigers, accustomed to witnessing the captain's stoic demeanor, were taken aback by the sudden display of adorableness. MC, too, couldn't help but be surprised at the captain's affectionate yearning for the charming feline reward. Who would have thought that beneath the tough exterior lies a weakness for adorable cats? Looks like even captains have their sweet spots. Surprised by the unexpected turn of events, the vendor decided to reward Captain Gilga with the coveted cat prize as a gesture of gratitude for her numerous attempts despite not winning. Apologizing for the inadvertent inclusion of alcohol in the punishment, the vendor extended the cute cat prize to Gilga, who was visibly delighted by the unexpected act of kindness. John, still puzzled about the whole situation, could only watch as the captain triumphantly held the adorable cat prize. Persistence and a bit of charm can go a long way, even in festival games. With a playful grin, John teased Gilga about not winning the coveted silver saber but pointed out that at least she ended up with something. Little did MC know that the real victory for Gilga wasn't the saber but the adorable cat prize that the vendor generously bestowed upon her. As they continued to explore the festival, MC couldn't help but admire Gilga's unexpected joy over the cute trinket. 
Sometimes the smallest victories bring the greatest joy, and in this case, the cat prize turned out to be the real treasure for Captain Gilga. Amidst the lively festivities in the plaza, Gilga seemed determined to embrace the philosophy of, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Undeterred by the earlier setbacks at the Gorgon Tombola, she found herself drawn to another game booth. Perhaps fueled by the festive spirit or the lingering effects of the wine, Gilga was ready to give it another shot. The flickering lights, vibrant colors, and joyous sounds of the festival formed the backdrop to her renewed determination. Gilga's persistence is admirable, and the festival becomes a canvas for her unwavering spirit. It was a bustling day at the castle as the knights gathered in anticipation of the prince's upcoming wedding. The air was filled with a sense of excitement and camaraderie as the knights engaged in the important task of selecting their formal uniforms for the grand celebration. Laughter echoed through the chamber as the knights took turns trying on different uniforms, reveling in the fun of finding the perfect fit. There was a playful energy in the air as they exchanged jokes and compliments, enjoying the shared experience of preparing for the joyous occasion. Amidst the lively scene, John stood among the knights, observing the festivities. However, a hint of perplexity crossed John's face as he noticed that many of the uniforms were too large for his frame. His brow furrowed slightly, and he couldn't help but wonder if there was something smaller available that would suit him better. As the knights continued their jovial banter, John's quest for a more appropriately sized uniform added a touch of curiosity to the preparations, creating a moment of both amusement and concern in the midst of the celebratory atmosphere. Choosing the right outfit for a celebration can be a challenge, even for the bravest of knights. In the heart of the group stood Captain Gilga, a stern and commanding presence. The atmosphere shifted as she raised her voice, directing the knights to focus on the mission at hand rather than indulging in playful antics. Her words carried the weight of authority, cutting through the light-hearted mood that had permeated the room. Without wasting any time, Captain Gilga began to unbuckle her belt, signaling her intention to change into her mission-ready attire. The knights, initially caught off guard, shifted their attention from camaraderie to a more serious demeanor. The air became charged with a sense of urgency and purpose. However, amidst this unfolding scene, MC stepped forward. With a respectful yet assertive tone, MC reminded Captain Gilga that she had been instructed to change in a separate room due to her being the only female in the unit. It was a moment of tact and consideration, ensuring a level of privacy and respect within the group. As John's words hung in the air, there was a brief pause, and Captain Gilga acknowledged the reminder, redirecting her steps toward a more private space. The room, once filled with the anticipation of a mission, now held a moment of understanding and professionalism. Communication is key even in the midst of a mission. It's essential to maintain respect and privacy, ensuring a cohesive and considerate team dynamic. Following the reminder from MC, Captain Gilga acknowledged the misunderstanding and gracefully accepted the guidance. With a sense of understanding, MC accompanied Gilga to the room designated for the ladies-in-waiting, ensuring a space where she could change in privacy. As they walked together, Gilda expressed her apology, admitting that she hadn't been aware of the separate changing protocol. She explained that in the Elven unit, men and women were treated equally, and she had assumed that the same principle applied within the current situation. Her apology carried a genuine tone, showcasing her willingness to adapt and learn from the diverse practices within the group. In the ladies-in-waiting room, Gilda continued to express her sentiments. She shared that in the Elven unit, the emphasis was on equality, and she had never encountered a situation where her presence in the same room raised concerns. She added that she genuinely believed that no one would mind, given the unit's cooperative and understanding nature. This exchange became a moment of cultural exchange and mutual respect. It highlighted the importance of recognizing and accommodating different perspectives within a diverse team, fostering an atmosphere of openness and cooperation. Sometimes it's the little details that bring about understanding and unity within a team. It's a reminder that each member brings their own experiences and traditions, contributing to the richness of the group dynamic. Upon arriving at the room designated for the ladies-in-waiting, John decided to playfully nudge Captain Gilga inside. The light-hearted gesture added a touch of humor to the situation, momentarily breaking the seriousness of their mission preparations. As Gilga entered the room, the atmosphere transformed. The sound of giggles echoed through the air, revealing the lively camaraderie among the females in their unit. The room, adorned with feminine touches, created a contrast to the more austere ambience outside. Soft colors, delicate fabrics, and the presence of laughter turned it into a sanctuary of femininity. For Captain Gilga, the scene was a bit overwhelming. 
accustomed to the disciplined and serious environment of the Elven unit. The sudden immersion into such a distinctly feminine space caught her off guard. As she observed the ladies-in-waiting in their uniforms, she couldn't help but feel a sense of surprise and perhaps a hint of nostalgia for a different kind of camaraderie. It was a moment of contrast, where the mission-focused captain found herself in a space that celebrated a different aspect of unity. The experience added a layer of complexity to the day, offering a glimpse into the very dynamics within the unit. It's a reminder that diversity extends beyond tasks and missions, encompassing the unique personalities and spaces within a team. Apologizing for the intrusion, Captain Gilva excused herself momentarily to change into her mission attire. As she undressed, she couldn't help but notice the sparkling and cute underwear adorning each of the ladies in the room. The contrast with her own more practical undergarments made her feel a bit out of place in this distinctly feminine space. In the midst of her thoughts, the ladies in the room recognized Gilga as the elven captain. A moment of surprise swept through the room, and some of the ladies approached her with gratitude. They expressed their thanks for a previous occasion when Gilga had assisted them. It turned out they were just about to try on the uniforms they had been given, and Gilga's help had evidently made a positive impact. This unexpected interaction bridged the gap between the formal roles within the unit, revealing a shared sense of camaraderie among the women. Despite the initial feeling of being out of place, Captain Gilga found herself appreciated and thanked for her support, creating a connection that transcended the distinctions of rank and hierarchy. Sometimes it's the moments of unexpected connection that remind us of the shared experiences that unite a team, even in the most surprising circumstances. The ladies in the room couldn't contain their admiration as they showered Captain Gilga with praises. They marveled at her fair skin, describing it as ethereal, and they couldn't help but notice her slender waist, which they deemed elegantly proportioned. Gilda's silky hair also became a topic of discussion, with some expressing curiosity about whether she used something special to maintain its luxurious texture. Amidst the compliments, Captain Gilda, though appreciative, modestly acknowledged the kind words. She shared a few tips about her skincare routine and mentioned a natural elven hair treatment that she had learned from her grandmother. The room buzzed with friendly chatter as the ladies exchanged beauty tips and bonded over their shared experiences. The impromptu beauty conversation added a touch of warmth to the room, creating a light and friendly atmosphere. Despite the differences in their roles and responsibilities, the ladies found common ground in appreciating each other's unique qualities and sharing insights on self-care. It's a reminder that compliments and shared experiences can create connections that go beyond the surface. Inspired by the idea of seeing Captain Gilba in a dress, one of the ladies in the room shared her thoughts with the group. They contemplated the practicality of dresses, acknowledging that they could be a bit challenging for movement. However, curiosity and excitement filled the air as they expressed a collective desire to see Captain Gilba in a dress, even if just for a moment. Gilda, overhearing the conversation, chimed in, admitting that she didn't own many girly things. The ladies, undeterred, saw this as an opportunity to add a touch of femininity to their typically mission-focused captain. In a collaborative spirit, they started to share ideas and opinions on what kind of dress would suit Gilda's features and style. The atmosphere in the room shifted from serious mission preparations to a playful and creative moment. The ladies found joy in the prospect of adding a bit of glamour to their leader and Gilga, in turn, embraced the unexpected camaraderie. The idea of seeing Captain Gilga in a dress became a light-hearted diversion, creating a memorable break in the midst of their preparations. Who would have thought that a mission preparation could turn into a fashion brainstorming session? While Captain Gilga was in the midst of her unexpected fashion consultation with the ladies-in-waiting, MC found himself in conversation with the general. As they discussed the delay in Gilga donning her uniform, MC decided to be honest and share the humorous turn of events. MC recounted how he had guided Captain Gilva to the women's change room, not realizing that the ladies were in the middle of their impromptu fashion discussion. The general, initially surprised, couldn't help but chuckle at the unexpected turn of events. Just as John finished explaining, the door to the ladies-in-waiting room burst open, and there stood Captain Gilga, now adorned in a maid dress. The room fell silent for a moment before erupting into a mix of laughter and surprise. Gilga, with an expression that combined embarrassment and amusement, found herself at the center of an unexpected fashion transformation. The general, still amused, couldn't help but appreciate the light-hearted atmosphere. The whole situation turned into a shared moment of laughter and camaraderie, reminding everyone that even in the midst of serious preparations, there's always room for a good-natured surprise. Who would have thought that a simple wardrobe mishap could turn into such a memorable moment? 
Captain Gilga, standing there in the maid dress, couldn't help but express her frustration to John and the general. She explained how the ladies-in-waiting had convinced her to don the dress, insisting that it didn't even look good on her. In response, the general with a smile offered a compliment, saying that she looked pretty good in the unexpected ensemble. John, ever the diplomatic one, chimed in, assuring Gilga that she looked cute in the dress. However, he quickly added a playful note, causing Gilga to blush a bit. She urged MC not to make fun of her, even though she admitted that the clothes themselves were indeed quite charming. The room filled with a mix of laughter and light-hearted banter as the trio navigated the unexpected fashion critique. The moment became a shared experience, highlighting the camaraderie and playful dynamics within the team, even in the face of mission preparations. It seems like even in unexpected outfits, Captain Gilga manages to maintain her grace and charm. As the conversation unfolded, both the general and MC made it clear that their compliments weren't solely directed at the clothes, but at Captain Gilga herself. They found her beautiful in the unexpected ensemble, appreciating the charm and grace she carried even in a maid dress. General Dutch, with a twinkle in his eye, took it a step further and suggested that Captain Gilga consider wearing the maid dress during the upcoming ceremony. His playful suggestion added a touch of humor to the situation, and the room erupted into laughter once again. Captain Gilga, caught between amusement and mild embarrassment, couldn't help but smile at the camaraderie that had developed. The unexpected turn of events had transformed a routine mission preparation into a shared moment of lightheartedness and connection among the team. Who would have thought that a maid dress could become a potential ceremony outfit? In Captain Gilga's office, the atmosphere was filled with the usual sounds of shuffling papers and the occasional murmur of castle activity. John, having just concluded his daily report, noticed that Captain Gilga seemed a bit preoccupied with something. Sensing her contemplative mood, he looked up, ready to address any additional matters. To his surprise, Captain Gilga, after a moment of apparent shyness, mustered the courage to ask John a question. With a soft voice, she inquired if he was free on Saturday. MC, intrigued by the unexpected question, responded affirmatively, expressing his availability. The subtle shift in atmosphere hinted at the possibility of plans beyond the usual work discussions, introducing an element of curiosity and perhaps a hint of excitement to their upcoming Saturday. It looks like there might be a dash of intrigue in plans outside of the usual routine for John and Captain Gilga. Saturdays are for surprises after all. As the Grey Tigers vigorously swung their swords in the midst of their training, John found himself preoccupied with thoughts of Captain Gilga's recent behavior and the unexpected request for his availability on Saturday. A subtle distraction lingered in his mind, creating a mild dissonance with the usual focus required during training sessions. The realization struck, Saturday was MC's birthday. The possibility of Captain Gilga planning a surprise party for him crossed his mind, prompting a mix of curiosity and confusion. He was puzzled over how she could have known about his birthday since he couldn't recall ever mentioning it to anyone. Birthdays are always filled with surprises, but planning a party without a heads up is a mystery worth unraveling. Looks like John is in for an unexpected celebration. Caught in his thoughts about the upcoming Saturday, MC suddenly noticed Captain Gilga by his side. Apologizing for his brief distraction, he returned his focus to the training session with the Grey Tigers. However, to his surprise, Captain Gilga's attention shifted to the gloves John was wearing. With a discerning look, it seemed like Captain Gilga was analyzing the gloves. A moment of confusion washed over John's face as he tried to decipher the captain's intentions. Without missing a beat, Captain Gilga offered some advice. She suggested that he shouldn't exert too much force into his swings, emphasizing that precision held more significance than sheer strength in their training. Looks like Captain Gilda is not only focused on the mission but also on honing the skills of her team members. John found himself once again in Captain Gilga's office, this time with a stack of documents that needed her attention. As he handed over one of the papers, Captain Gilga's sharp eyes caught something unexpected, his fingers. Surprised, John couldn't help but wonder what had caught her attention. Captain Gilga, with a concerned tone, asked MC about his fingers, questioning if he had accidentally stubbed them. Slightly taken aback, MC assured her that everything was fine, but the captain insisted on taking a closer look. The unexpected inspection left John both puzzled and curious about what might have drawn her attention. After a brief examination, Captain Gilga reassured John, muttering that everything should be okay. The cryptic comment only deepened the mystery for MC. Then with a sudden change in tone, Captain Gilga informed MC that she would take care of reviewing the documents and, unexpectedly, excused him for the rest of the day. 
Confusion lingered in the air as John left the captain's office, wondering about the sudden turn of events and what might have prompted Captain Gilga's concern. Sometimes, even the smallest details can lead to unexpected surprises. One week later, John found himself strolling down one of the castle hallways, lost in thought about the upcoming meeting with Captain Gilga the next day. As he reflected on the captain's recent behaviors, a realization dawned on him, they had been alone during their interactions. The thought triggered a sense of anticipation and curiosity. In MC's mind, the possibility of Captain Gilga having something planned, perhaps an admonishment or a serious conversation, began to take shape. The solitude of their recent interactions fueled his speculation, leaving him to wonder about the nature of the forthcoming meeting. Alone in the hallway, John's thoughts danced with anticipation. In the midst of his contemplation, a man's voice abruptly interrupted MC's thoughts. Turning around, he was greeted by a blacksmith who introduced himself and mentioned that he had come to deliver something to Captain Gilga. John, being considerate, suggested that the blacksmith could pass the item directly to Gilga. This response brought a smile to the blacksmith's face, and he eagerly shared the news that he had successfully resized the ring. MC, acting as the messenger, agreed to relay the information to Captain Gilga. As if on cue, Captain Gilga appeared, and upon seeing the blacksmith, recognition flickered in her eyes. She acknowledged the delivery and thanked John for his assistance. In a decisive tone, she instructed him to go home, indicating that she would take it from there. Castle life is full of unexpected twists. A blacksmith, a resized ring, and a message delivered. It seems like there's more to the castle's daily happenings than meets the eye. As John ambled through the hallways once again, his mind was fixated on the mysterious ring. The memory of Captain Gilga's attention to his fingers, especially the moment in her office when she examined his hands, lingered in his thoughts. The peculiar remark, it should be okay, after her inspection fueled a growing curiosity in MC's mind. The realization struck him. The next day was his birthday. The pieces of the puzzle seemed to fall into place, and John couldn't help but connect the dots. The ring, the sizing, the captain's attention to his fingers, it all hinted at a potential birthday surprise orchestrated by Captain Gilga. The castle corridors hold the secret of what's to come. The next day arrived, and John found himself in a restaurant with Captain Gilga. His deduction about the surprise ring present lingered in his mind, adding a layer of excitement to the occasion. However, as they sat down, Captain Gilga, with a discerning gaze, pointed out that MC looked a bit pale. She inquired about his sleep, asking if he had been getting proper rest. In response, MC, trying to maintain a calm exterior, assured her that he had been sleeping like a rock. A subtle contradiction unfolded as he confessed internally that he hadn't managed to get a wink of sleep. The juxtaposition of his external assurance and internal restlessness added a touch of humor and irony to the conversation. Ah, the classic struggle between appearances and reality. John's attempt to mask his lack of sleep sets the stage for a day filled with unexpected twists and turns. Captain Gilga, with a warm smile, finally revealed the reason for their meeting that day. She confessed that it was to wish John a happy birthday. The surprise was out and Gilga, with a touch of apology, explained that she had kept it a secret to make it more special. She went on to share that she had learned about John's birthday from his mom during their visit to their home. The revelation added a layer of thoughtfulness to the surprise, showcasing the captain's effort to create a memorable birthday celebration. The castle's corridors are full of delightful surprises. As Captain Gilda wished MC a happy birthday, she emphasized the significance of his presence in her life. With a genuine expression of gratitude, she acknowledged how he had been there for her through everything, from A to Z ever since she arrived. It went beyond mere gratitude. Gilda confessed that MC had become something special to her. The words lingered in the air, carrying a depth of emotion that went beyond the usual camaraderie. In a moment of heartfelt sincerity, Captain Gilga revealed a ring from her hand, symbolizing the depth of her feelings. She asked John, with a vulnerable yet determined tone, if he accepted her sentiments. The castle corridors witness more than just routine adventures. Sometimes, they become the backdrop for moments that redefine connections and relationships. In response to Captain Gilga's heartfelt gesture, John found himself in a delicate moment. Despite the depth of her feelings and the sincerity of her offer, John gently declined expressing that she knew about her lord and couldn't accept such a significant gift. Captain Gilga, initially shocked by his response, soon burst into laughter. She reassured John that he had misunderstood, revealing the true nature of the ring. 
In her hometown, it was customary to give a ring inscribed with meaningful words as a gift to those embarking on new ventures or challenges. The words inscribed on the ring held a special significance, translating to be noble and elvish. It wasn't a romantic proposal, but rather a thoughtful gift from Gilva to John, symbolizing support and encouragement for his journey and endeavors. Ah, the beauty of cultural gestures and the importance of communication. MC, realizing that he had misunderstood the meaning behind Gilga's gift, offered a sincere apology. He admitted that his deductions were way off base, influenced by his awareness of Gilga's pursuit of her lord. The revelation left Gilga slightly shocked, but she quickly clarified the nature of her relationship with her lord. In a calm and rational tone, Gilda explained that her lord was simply her master and the idea of getting together with him was impossible. The shock on her face shifted to a mix of understanding and perhaps a hint of amusement at MC's unexpected assumptions. The moment became a lesson in the complexities of relationships and the importance of communication. John, having cleared the air, found himself in a state of relief, and the two shared a laugh over the unexpected turns their conversation had taken. Misunderstandings happen, but it's the clarity that follows that strengthens bonds. Embracing the spirit of camaraderie, John suggested to Captain Gilda that they should embark on a quest to uncover more clues about her elusive my lord. The idea struck a chord with Gilga, and she agreed, opening the door to a new adventure. However, before they could delve into the mystery, Captain Gilga had another surprise up her sleeve. She presented John with a thoughtful gift, a new pair of gloves to replace his tattered ones. The gesture spoke volumes about Gilga's attention to detail and her genuine concern for John's well-being. With a warm smile, Gilga once again asked John if he accepted her birthday presents. This time, without hesitation, John gladly accepted. The unexpected turns of the day from cultural gifts to practical ones added a layer of depth to their friendship and made MC's birthday celebration truly memorable. The castle's corridors may hold mysteries, but they also witnessed the blossoming of meaningful connections. As MC slipped on the ring that Captain Gilga had given him, he noticed that it felt surprisingly loose on his finger. Curious, he couldn't help but inquire about the sizing. Gilda, with a light-hearted smile, explained that initially, she had intended to get a size that would snugly fit his current fingers. However, in a burst of foresight and optimism, she decided to opt for a larger size. Her reasoning? Gilda playfully mentioned that she believed John still had a lot more growing to do. The unexpected twist added a touch of humor to the moment, and John couldn't help but appreciate the thoughtfulness behind the choice of a larger ring size. The loose ring became a symbolic reminder of potential growth and future adventures, capturing the essence of their friendship and the anticipation of what lay ahead. It seems like Captain Gilga's choice of a larger ring size is a gesture that extends beyond the present, embodying the hope for future growth and shared experiences. With the surprises and discussions settling into a comfortable atmosphere, MC and Captain Gilga turned their attention to the spread of dishes before them. They began to enjoy the array of flavors laid out on the table, savoring each bite as the conversation seamlessly shifted from mysteries to more lighthearted topics. Captain Gilga, with a caring demeanor, encouraged MC to indulge in the feast. She emphasized the importance of savoring the moment and advised him to eat as much as he could, all the while reminding him to chew properly. The meal became not just a celebration of John's birthday, but also a shared moment of enjoyment and camaraderie. The clinking of utensils and the laughter that echoed in the restaurant signaled the ease that had settled between them. The castle's corridors, filled with surprises and unexpected turns, now witnessed the simple joy of shared laughter and a delightful meal. Sometimes, the best celebrations involve good company, delicious food, and shared laughter. In the midst of the training session with the Grey Tigers, John found himself in a sparring duel with none other than Captain Gilga. The clash of their swords created a rhythmic echo across the training grounds as they engaged in a carefully choreographed dance of offense and defense. MC skillfully showcased his defensive abilities, adeptly parrying each of Captain Gilga's sword attacks. However, Captain Gilga, renowned for her strategic prowess, observed that relying solely on a defensive stance wouldn't lead to victory. In her discerning eyes, John needed to shift from a purely defensive approach to a more assertive and strategic one to overcome his opponent. The training session transformed into more than just a physical exercise. It evolved into a profound lesson in tactics and adaptability. The resounding clang of their swords continued as John absorbed Captain Gilga's insightful advice. The dynamic between the captain and her subordinate underwent a metamorphosis from a friendly sparing match to a valuable learning experience in the pursuit of mastery. 
It was no longer merely about showcasing physical prowess, but also about cultivating a strategic mindset and the ability to adapt to different situations. The training ground became a crucible of growth, with each clash of swords representing not only a physical exchange, but also a step forward in the journey towards honing one's skills and mastering the art of combat. Training sessions not only build physical prowess, but also serve as a platform for growth and improvement. In the final moments of the sparing match, John took the initiative to attack, carefully observing Captain Gilga's footsteps. He launched a well-timed swing of his sword, but it was skillfully defended by Gilga. The exchange showcased a newfound assertiveness in John's approach, even though the victory remained elusive. As the training session concluded, MC felt the weight of exhaustion from the intense practice. He had managed only one successful swing of his sword, but it carried the essence of progress. Captain Gilga, recognizing his efforts, gently patted MC's head. Observing keenly, Gilga noted that MC's attention wasn't solely on her sword, but also on her footwork and stance. She acknowledged his improvement, a subtle yet significant step forward in his training journey. The camaraderie between captain and subordinate deepened as they shared a moment of recognition in the aftermath of the rigorous training. Progress, even in small steps, is a cause for celebration. Captain Gilga's acknowledgement adds a layer of encouragement to John's journey of improvement in the castle's training grounds. Grateful for Captain Gilga's praise, John expressed his thanks with genuine appreciation. The smile on Gilga's face reflected not only satisfaction in John's progress, but also a sense of pride in the overall improvement of the knights under her command. Inspired by the positive atmosphere and the collective progress of the knights, Captain Gilga couldn't resist a smile. Her eyes sparkled with an idea as she observed the dedication and growth within her unit. With the afternoon approaching, she decided that it was the perfect time for a different kind of training, a mental exercise to complement the physical drills. The notion of mental training added a new dimension to the night's routine, fostering not only physical strength, but also mental resilience and strategic thinking. The castle's training grounds, once echoing with the clash of swords, now held the promise of a different, more contemplative training session in the afternoon. A well-rounded training regimen, blending physical and mental exercises, promises a holistic approach to improvement. In a serene scene within the castle's training grounds, the knights, including MC, found themselves seated on the floor, engaged in meditation. Captain Gilga, at the forefront, guided them through the mental training session. As they closed their eyes, she emphasized the importance of mastering techniques not only through physical strength, but also by nurturing a resilient and focused mind. In the hushed atmosphere, Captain Gilga spoke about the significance of mental fortitude. She urged the knights to ensure that their hearts and minds remained steadfast, unwavering like the calm flow of a spring. The analogy resonated in the stillness of the training grounds, creating a sense of unity and purpose among the knights. The mental training provided a different kind of discipline, fostering not only physical prowess, but also the inner strength required for a true swordsman. As the knights embraced the meditative practice, the castle's training grounds became a haven for the harmonious blending of physical and mental disciplines. The knight's journey now encompasses not only the clash of swords, but also the cultivation of a calm and resilient mind. As Captain Gilda guided the knights through the meditation, her instructions echoed in the tranquil atmosphere. She emphasized the importance of letting go of worldly thoughts, urging them to focus their minds and face the calmness within. However, amidst the collective effort to maintain a serene ambience, a sudden yawn disrupted the stillness. Even with her eyes closed, Captain Gilga, in her meditative state, sensed the lapse in focus. With a touch of surprise, she singled out the one who had yawned, stating that it was too early for him to feel sleepy. The unexpected intervention left both MC and the culprit of the yawn startled. They hadn't anticipated Captain Gilga's acute awareness, even in the midst of meditation. The incident added a lighthearted moment to the otherwise contemplative session, proving that the captain's vigilance extended beyond the physical training grounds. Even in the realm of meditation, Captain Gilga's attention to detail and ability to maintain discipline shined through. Captain Gilga, unwavering in her commitment to maintain focus during the meditation, suddenly scolded another knight for scratching their back. Her stern reminder emphasized the need for complete concentration and discipline in the moment. Sensing the importance of the exercise, John redirected his attention, attempting to immerse himself fully in the meditative state. Captain Gilga continued her guidance, urging the knights to listen carefully, concentrate, and feel the air around them. Her instructions extended beyond the physical aspects, aiming to expand their senses of awareness and deepen their understanding of the space they occupied. 
The castle's training grounds, once filled with the clash of swords, now resonated with the subtle sounds of meditation and the captain's instructions. It became a space for honing not only physical prowess, but also cultivating a heightened sense of mindfulness and awareness. In the pursuit of mastery, Captain Gilda leads the knights into the realm of heightened awareness and concentration. In the midst of the tranquil meditation session, Captain Gilda, attuned to even the slightest disruptions, suddenly heard a familiar sound. To her disbelief, the serene atmosphere was interrupted not by the sounds of nature, but by the unmistakable buzzing of mosquitoes in the air. As she focused her senses, she realized that it wasn't just one rogue mosquito, but a gathering of them. Three, no four, and to her surprise, five mosquitoes flitting through the air. The irony of the situation didn't escape Gilga. Here they were, attempting to cultivate a heightened sense of awareness and concentration, only to be challenged by a squadron of buzzing mosquitoes. The knights, despite their disciplined efforts, found themselves contending with the unexpected guests, adding a touch of humor to the otherwise contemplative scene. Even in the pursuit of mindfulness, nature can have its own sense of humor. Captain Gilva's reaction to the unexpected mosquitoes revealed a rare glimpse of her frustration. Clenching her hands, she expressed her dislike for these unwelcome visitors, highlighting the fact that mosquitoes weren't native to elven lands, but instead nested in human territories. She lamented the unpleasant truth that mosquitoes seemed to prefer biting her, attributing it to the rarity of her blood. The buzzing sound and the itchy aftermath of mosquito bites proved to be a nuisance that even an elven captain couldn't escape. For Gilga, it wasn't the human customs or language that posed a challenge, but rather the relentless and bothersome presence of mosquitoes. Her disdain for these tiny creatures added a touch of humor to the meditation session, turning it into an unexpected battle against the buzzing invaders in the castle's training grounds. Even in the fantasy world, mosquitoes managed to be a universal source of irritation. As the persistent mosquitoes circled around Captain Gilda, seemingly drawn to her, she found herself in a dilemma. Slapping them away might set a less than disciplined example for her subordinates, and Gilda pondered on a more graceful solution. It was in this moment of contemplation that she decided to employ a different tactic. Summoning her fighting spirit, Gilda channeled her elven strength and resolve. With a focused gaze and a determined aura, she directed her energy toward the mosquitoes, using the power of her will to drive them away. It was a demonstration not only of physical prowess, but also of the indomitable spirit that defined her as a captain. The knights, witnessing their leader's unconventional yet effective method, observed with a mix of amusement and admiration. The castle's training grounds, which had become an unexpected battleground against mosquitoes, now bore witness to Captain Gilga's unique approach to challenges. In the face of buzzing adversaries, Captain Gilga's use of her fighting spirit adds a touch of elven magic to the otherwise mundane struggle against mosquitoes. After that grueling training session with the mosquitoes, the gray tigers congregated, sharing murmurs about how thoroughly exhausted they felt. The session had drained them in a way that differed from their usual drills. Meanwhile, MC found himself reflecting on the challenge of focusing amidst the relentless onslaught of chills and buzzing mosquitoes during meditation. It underscored the incredible resilience and endurance demonstrated by their captain, Gilga. Despite the discomfort, MC couldn't help but admire her unwavering determination and leadership. Recalling Captain Gilga's encouraging words during practical training, MC made a silent vow to give his absolute best in the upcoming sessions. He felt a surge of determination to push through any obstacles that stood in the way of his improvement. As MC swatted away the last of the mosquitoes, he couldn't help but wonder if the insects had undergone special ops training themselves, silently plotting their next ambush on the unsuspecting gray tigers. In Captain Gilga's quarters, she experienced a discomfort of her own, contending with the itchy bites left by the mosquitoes. She absent-mindedly scratched at her skin, lamenting the feast the pests had enjoyed at her expense. Yet, amidst the irritation, a knowing smile graced her lips as she reflected on the incremental progress of MC and the rest of the team. As their superior, she took pride in witnessing their growth, even if it meant enduring the occasional inconvenience. However, she resolved not to subject herself to any more mosquito bites, determined to find a solution to mitigate their nuisance in future training sessions. The knights received a summons to organize the armory, and the memory of the last time Captain Gilga and John ventured into that space resurfaced. It was during that visit that they had selected a new armor for Gilga, an experience that lingered in the castle's history. As they entered the armory once again, the air was filled with the scent of metal and leather. Rows of gleaming swords, polished armor, and an array of weaponry awaited the organization. The knights under Captain Gilga's leadership 
set to work categorizing, cleaning, and arranging the equipment with precision. The armory, with its gleaming swords and polished armor, holds not only the tools of war, but also the echoes of past decisions and shared experiences. Amidst the bustling activity in the armory, the knights were engrossed in their tasks of organizing weapons and armor. The clang of metal and the shuffling of footsteps filled the air as they diligently worked to maintain order in the storied space. A particular instance drew attention when two gray tigers, with evident effort, were lifting a box filled with items. However, their efforts were halted by a directive from a discerning comrade. The realization dawned that the box they were struggling with was, in fact, designated as trash. Even in the midst of serious tasks, a touch of humor keeps the atmosphere lively in the armory. As MC and Captain Gilga strolled through the armory, their eyes fell upon a striking piece, an armor with a helmet intricately modeled after the Red Chaos Dragon. The detailed craftsmanship captivated MC, and he couldn't help but express his enthusiasm, finding the dragon-inspired design incredibly cool. Intrigued by John's evident interest, Captain Gilva inquired if he had a fondness for dragons. With a smile, John affirmed his admiration for these mythical creatures. The exchange highlighted not only the visual appeal of the armory's creations, but also the personal taste and interest of the knights who frequented the space. In the castle's storied halls, each piece tells a unique tale. Captain Gilda, ever practical and experienced, responded to MC's admiration of the dragon-themed armor with a touch of insight. She noted that while the armor looked extravagant and captivating, its weight made it impractical for battlefield use. Instead, she suggested that it might be more fitting for festive occasions or a triumphant return home. The armory, once again, becomes a place where history, artistry, and practicality converge in the castle's halls. Captain Gilda, with her wealth of experience, imparted a valuable lesson to John. She emphasized that judging the worth of a piece of equipment should not be based solely on its appearance, but rather on its practical usefulness. It was a reminder that in the world of knights and battles, functionality and efficiency held paramount importance. MC, understanding the wisdom in Gilda's words, respectfully complied. He brought his hands to this chest, a gesture of acknowledgement and respect for the captain's guidance. The exchange underscored the importance of humility and a willingness to learn the knight's journey within the castle's walls. Captain Gilga's guidance adds depth to the knight's understanding of their craft. Captain Gilga, continuing her role as a mentor, extended a gracious offer to John. She informed him that he could borrow the book on swordsmanship they had discussed earlier. The condition? MC simply needed to drop by her room. The knights, it seems, find growth not only in the clang of swords, but also in the wisdom shared within the castle's walls. As the knight enveloped the castle, John expressed gratitude to Captain Gilga for the dinner. The quiet ambience accompanied them as they made their way towards Gilga's room. However, the tranquility was abruptly shattered when they stumbled upon the knight cat armor placed outside, right by Gilga's door. The knight, which was meant for quiet reflection, took an unexpected turn with the appearance of the knight cat armor. In the dimly lit hallway, MC revealed that the night cat armor they encountered was indeed an imitation. He recalled how Gilga had taken a liking to it during their armor selection expedition. However, Captain Gilga, now standing in front of the night cat armor, felt a pang of embarrassment. She quickly clarified that she didn't particularly take a liking to the costume, attempting to downplay any notions of personal attachment. The revelation added a touch of humor to the knight, as the captain's attempt to maintain a composed exterior betrayed a hint of bashfulness. The knight's journey, marked by serious endeavors and moments of levity, finds a new chapter in the castle's historic halls. John's keen observation led him to discover a letter tucked into the boots of the knight cat armor. When Captain Gilga read the contents, they learned that the letter was from General Dutch. The message explained that the knight cat armor, whether due to being outdated or for other reasons, was being removed from the armory. The general, aware of Gilga's previous interest in the costume, generously offered it to her. General Dutch's act of generosity adds an unexpected layer to the tale. What adventures lie ahead for Captain Gilga and her newly acquired night cat armor? In a moment of realization, MC couldn't help but confess to Captain Gilga. He admitted that it might have been his fault that the night cat armor was gifted to her. He shared that during a conversation with General Dutch, he mentioned how Gilga had taken a liking to the armor despite her insistence otherwise. Gilga, caught off guard by the revelation, reiterated her stance, insisting that she didn't particularly fancy the costume. The castle's quiet corridors now echoed with a mix of revelation, confession, and a touch of playful banter between John and the captain. Well, looks like John spilled the armor beans to Captain Gilga. 
awkward much? Now the castle's not only echoing with secrets, but also a sprinkle of banter. Frustrated by the unexpected gift, Captain Gilda expressed her intention to return the night cat armor to General Dutch as soon as possible. However, MC, being practical, pointed out that it was already late at night. He suggested they wait until morning for the return, and in the meantime, the costume could stay in Gilga's room. Practicality meets fashion emergency in the late night castle dilemma. Sweet dreams with a touch of night cat glamour, perhaps? Captain Gilda, lying in her bed, found herself unable to shake off the presence of the night cat armor beside her. Despite her initial frustration and the intention to return it promptly, the allure of the costume proved too strong to resist. She turned away, attempting to divert her attention and focus on sleep, but the presence of the armor seemed to persist in capturing her curiosity. Unable to resist the temptation any longer, Jilva succumbed to the allure and decided to wear the night cat armor. The castle's quiet halls bore witness to this unexpected turn of events as a captain found herself donning a costume meant for stealth and mystery. Who needs pajamas when you have a stealthy costume? Castle Secrets just got a fashionable twist. With the night cat armor now adorned, Captain Gilda couldn't resist the temptation to complete the ensemble. She reached for her cosmetics kit, examining her face in the mirror. To her satisfaction, she found the combination of the armor and her makeup to be perfect, reflecting a blend of strength and mystery. Despite the costume feeling a bit tight in the chest area and the skirt turning out shorter than expected, Gilda embraced the look with a sense of confidence. The castle's halls, usually filled with echoes of armor and swords, now hosted the image of Captain Gilda transformed into a night cat, a juxtaposition of elegance and warrior spirit. Who knew mystery and confidence could fit so snugly? The Night Cat Chronicles, where armor meets runway in the castle halls. Captain Gilda, reveling in the enjoyment of the night cat armor, playfully posed and admired herself in the mirror. The allure of the costume led her to experiment with different stances, even adding a playful shake of her butt for good measure. However, the small mirror in her room limited her view, prompting an idea to fully appreciate the ensemble. The prospect of a larger mirror in the main building sparked excitement in Gilda. Eager to see her entire appearance, she decided to venture to the larger mirror where she could take in the full scope of the night cat armor's effect on her. The castle, now a stage for a captain's playful escapade, brimmed with the unexpected twists of the night's nightly adventures. The castle's knights probably never expected a fashion show in their nightly adventures. Watch out, night cat strut is coming through. As Captain Jilga contemplated the idea of going to the main building for a larger mirror, she initially dismissed it, considering the impracticality of wearing the night cat armor outside. However, fate had other plans. Fueled by a sense of curiosity and an unexpected sound nearby, Jilga found herself stepping out into the quiet night. Careful in her movements and convinced that there was no one around, Gilda was suddenly jolted by a distinct flick sound nearby. Without a moment's hesitation, her instincts kicked in, and she sprinted toward the source of the sound, ready to offer assistance. The night, it seems, holds both surprises and responsibilities for the guardians of the castle. In a secluded corner of the castle's grounds, a group of menacing men harassed an old woman, demanding the jewels she possessed. The vulnerable scene was interrupted by a commanding voice, challenging the aggressors to leave the woman alone. In a swift and skillful display, Captain Gilda emerged from the shadows, swiftly incapacitating the group of men. With the threat neutralized, Jilva turned her attention to the shaken old woman, ensuring her safety. Relieved to find the woman unharmed, Jilva was surprised when the grateful woman noticed the night cat armor and affectionately referred to her as Kitty. The castle's quiet night, initially filled with the playful escapades of a captain, transformed into a tableau of heroism as Captain Gilva stepped in to protect the vulnerable, blending the playful with the valiant in the tapestry of the knight's nightly adventures. The blend of duty and lightheartedness defines the knight's journey within the castle's historic walls. Captain Gilga, responding to the cry for help, never expected that her heroic act would draw attention to the night cat armor she wore. Focused on the immediate danger, she hadn't considered the possibility of being seen in the costume. As a group approached, she swiftly retreated, leaving the old woman curious about the mysterious cat's savior. The following day, as MC approached Gilga's room, he overheard people excitedly discussing the cat girl who had intervened to save the jeweler's wife. The cat girl, dressed in a cat costume, had single-handedly dealt with the thieves. Intrigued by the mysterious character, John rushed to Gilga's room to share the news, only to be met with an unexpected sight. To his surprise, there stood Captain Gilga, looking both shy and embarrassed, next to the night cat armor. 
The castle's halls, once witnesses to knights in armor, now held the tale of a cat-clad heroine and the unexpected intertwining of duty and lightheartedness. The blend of duty, surprise, and a touch of embarrassment shaped the narrative within the castle's historic walls. In the opulent mansion of the wealthy merchant Yokuba, John and Captain Gilda found themselves in a rather peculiar situation. Yokuba, adorned in frustration, voiced his complaints about a witch who had apparently left his precious gemstones looking far from their usual resplendent state. The witch, seemingly unfazed by the merchant's discontent, offered a unique solution, summon Captain Gilga. With an air of curiosity and a hint of bemusement, Captain Gilga and MC exchanged glances, both intrigued by the unexpected request to restore the luster of Yokuba's gemstones. The stage was set for a peculiar collaboration between the disciplined captain and the mystical arts of the witch. The blend of Captain Gilga's military prowess with the whimsical world of a witch adds an interesting twist to the narrative. Captain Gilga, with a mix of stern authority and curiosity, sought confirmation from Yokuba regarding the identity of the witch. As the merchant affirmed that the witch in question was indeed called Zima, Gilga acknowledged the message relayed by Zima through Yokuba. The merchant explained that Zima was currently confined in the basement, a situation that he admitted might have caused some inconvenience. Intrigued by the unfolding mystique, Captain Gilga and John followed Yokuba to the basement, prepared to unravel the peculiar circumstances surrounding Zima and her connection to the gemstones. The interaction between Captain Gilga, John, and the mysterious witch promises to be an engaging exploration of the supernatural within the story's world. In the dimly lit basement, Captain Gilga confidently called out to Zima, the witch who was engaged in a casual moment of potion drinking. The atmosphere crackled with an air of magic as Zima, with a mischievous glint in her eyes, turned her attention toward the newcomers. The surroundings seemed to hold a subtle blend of enchantment and mystery as the trio embarked on this unusual encounter. Zima's nonchalant demeanor in the midst of potion making creates a whimsical touch to the scene. Zima, seated in a dimly lit corner of the basement, looked up with a mischievous glint in her eyes as Captain Gilgo called her name. The air was thick with the peculiar scent of various potions that adorned the shelves, creating an otherworldly ambience. Zima, holding a small vial in hand, greeted them with a bemused expression, her attention momentarily diverted from her concoctions. As Gilga scolded her for not hurrying to their aid, Zima chuckled, a playful twinkle in her eyes. She admitted that she got carried away with her potions and almost drained her entire supply, but the mischievous smile on her face hinted that perhaps she enjoyed the thrill of being fashionably late. The basement, lined with shelves filled with colorful and mysterious potion bottles, seemed like a clandestine laboratory where magic and alchemy danced in harmony. MC, unfamiliar with the ways of witches, couldn't help but express his surprise. With a quizzical look on his face, he asked if Zima was perhaps drunk or an alcoholic. Gilga, suppressing a smile, explained that the contents of Zima's bottles weren't alcoholic beverages, but potent potions designed to enhance recovery and performance. Zima, overhearing the conversation, interjected with a slay grin, revealing that her peculiar choice of potions allowed her to achieve a unique form of intoxication. Gilga added, with a touch of humor, that Zima could be aptly described as a potion-holic rather than an alcoholic, leaving MC both amused and intrigued by the unconventional practices of witches. Who knew getting intoxicated could be a magical potion away? Zima's eyes sparkled with mischief as she leaned forward, asking Captain Gilga why she was in Bhutan. With an air of casual nonchalance, Zima revealed that her primary motivation was to visit her buddy, Gilda, already accustomed to Zima's enigmatic ways, raised an eyebrow in curiosity, prompting Zima to share a cryptic grin. As Zima's gaze shifted towards John, who stood with a perplexed expression, she mischievously suggested that perhaps Captain Gilda had finally found her elusive lord. The insinuation hung in the air, and a momentary shock crossed John's face. However, Gilda quickly intervened, clarifying that MC was nothing more than one of her subordinates. Zima, unfazed by the revelation, let out a playful chuckle, seemingly entertained by the interaction unfolding before her. Who knew a witch's definition of a buddy could be so intriguing? Zima's nostalgic tone lingered in the air as she shared a surprising piece of her past with Captain Gilda. The mischievous witch couldn't help but express disbelief at the transformation of the naughty little girl she once knew. Time had turned the playful child wielding a stick into a captain of the knights, a fact that Zima found both amusing and incredulous. Gilga, in turn, couldn't help but marvel at the span of time that had passed since those carefree days. 
The conversation took a more serious turn as Gilva inquired about Zima's recent endeavors. Zima, ever the master of weaving tales, recounted an encounter with Yokuba, the owner of the mansion. She had coincidentally crossed paths with him at a tavern, where he was boastfully showcasing a precious jewel. Seizing the opportunity, Zima confidently informed Yokuba that she could conjure a similar gem using her magical prowess. Yokuba, seemingly captivated by Zima's magical promise, welcomed her into his home. The night unfolded with extravagant meals and the comfort of a plush bed, all provided by the generous merchant. Gilda, connecting the dots, realized that Zima's magical intervention had paved the way for her travels, with Yokuba unwittingly covering the expenses. Who knew a simple jewel could lead to such a whimsical arrangement? The revelation about Zima's attempt to replicate the jewel using magical means left MC astounded. He expressed his ignorance about the existence of spells capable of reproducing precious gems. Gilga, ever the practical captain, clarified that such spells didn't actually exist, prompting a playful retort from Zima. Zima, with a mischievous grin, corrected their assumptions. She admitted that she hadn't perfected the spell yet, inviting Gilga to lend a helping hand in the process. Despite the fact that jewel replication wasn't within Gilga's usual purview, Zima explained the peculiarities of the spell. The physical components needed for the spell had to be divided into two parts to materialize the second jewel successfully. Gilga, displaying her characteristic willingness to aid her friends, asked Zima about the specific assistance she required. Zima, delighted by Gilga's readiness to help, shared the details of the preparation work necessary for the spell. Who would have thought that a captain of the knights would be assisting a mischievous witch in magical experiments? As John and Gilga embarked on the quest to gather the necessary ingredients for Zima's spell, John outlined the items needed, salt, a potion with mandrake, and a whole roasted black lizard. In the midst of their journey, Jilva took a moment to enlighten MC about Zima's peculiar passion for magic. Zima, it seemed, was a magic fanatic who specialized in ancient spells. Her insatiable curiosity led her to travel across the world in search of fragments of these ancient incantations. Jilva shared a tidbit of their history, revealing that she and Zima had been inseparable since childhood. The bond formed in their early years persisted, connecting them through various adventures and mischief. As they continued their quest for spell ingredients, the camaraderie between the captain, the witch, and the knight wove a tapestry of friendship and shared experiences. It seems the journey to replicate a jewel is not just about magical ingredients, but also about the magic of enduring friendships. The search for the potion with Mandrake led MC and Gilga to a quaint apothecary, where they discovered the exorbitant price of the mystical concoction. Gilga, momentarily taken aback by the cost, questioned whether their budget could accommodate such an expense. However, in the face of their mission, they mustered the necessary funds and secured the precious potion. With the prize ingredient in hand, John and Gilga pressed on, undeterred by the financial strain. Their determination and resolve garnered Zima's praise as she acknowledged their hard work in the pursuit of the elusive spell components. Ah, the sacrifices we make for the arcane arts. Who knew magic could be so expensive? The things we do for friendship and glittering jewels, in the dimly lit basement, the tension between the merchant and Zima remained palpable, with the former warning the witch not to expect any leniency if she failed to restore his gemstone. Unfazed, Zima reassured him, exuding an air of confidence. As she began preparing the spell, the shocked expressions on John and Gilga's faces spoke volumes. The ingredients they had diligently acquired were casually dismissed by Zima, who nonchalantly devoured the provisions with an air of indifference. Gilga, who was already telling the cost in her mind, expressed her displeasure, insisting that Zima owed her for the expensive components. Zima, however, cleverly explained that the salt was the only item intended for the spell, and the rest were simply for her personal enjoyment. Zima's culinary preferences take priority over magical expenses. Who knew spell casting could be so appetite-inducing? In a mesmerizing display, Zima shed her witch attire, revealing a sultry ensemble that added a touch of mystique to the basement atmosphere. With newfound energy, she gracefully held the clouded gemstone in her hand, initiating a spell that left MC and Gilga in awe. Zuma's incantations flowed effortlessly, a testament to her mastery of ancient spells. The words uttered with a rhythmic cadence seemed to dance in the air, weaving an enchanting melody that resonated with the magical currents. Gilga, familiar with Zima's quick chanting prowess, found herself staggered once again by the witch's fluid movements. As Zima concluded her spell, Two gleaming gemstones rested in her hand, the once clouded crystal now restored to its pristine state. The merchant, Yokuba, 
couldn't help but be amused by the seamless transformation, his previously clouded gem, now radiant and lustrous. Zima's magical Theatrix, transforming gemstones and wardrobe alike. Who knew spellcasting could be so stylish? As they strolled away from Yokuba's mansion, the night air was filled with the gleeful energy of a successful restoration. John, Gilga, and Zima found themselves immersed in a conversation about the events that transpired inside the wealthy merchant's home. John, curious about Zima's decision to leave the celebratory atmosphere, asked if she truly wanted to depart. Yokuba, elated by the restored gemstones, had extended an invitation for Zima to stay and revel in the festivities. However, Zima, always the free spirit, was content with her role as a transient catalyst for magical solutions. Gilga, intrigued by the mysterious second gemstone, questioned Zima's actions. With a hearty laugh, Zima debunked any notion of crafting a genuine second jewel. Instead, she confessed to creating a convincing imitation using a different material, emphasizing its temporary nature. The satisfaction Yokuba would derive from admiring it for a week served as ample payment for Zima's brief stay at the mansion. In a surprising gesture, Zima reached into her pocket and handed Gilga a family crest bearing the insignia of the Astor family. Gilga's eyes widened with delight as she accepted the unexpected gift. Zima, nonchalant in her response, revealed that she stumbled upon the crest in a black market for gadgets in the eastern Nast Desert. However, its origin remained a mystery, lost in the shadows of the underground market. Gilga, grateful for the thoughtful present, inquired if Zima had specifically come to Vutoan for the crest. Zima, ever the whimsical friend, admitted that the desire to witness Gilga's smile played a role in her decision. Quickly retracting the sentiment, she jokingly mentioned that she merely dropped by during her search for ancient magical documents in the area. As Zima bid her friends farewell and strolled into the distance, MC, in a playful reminder, pointed out that she had forgotten to reclaim her money from the witch. Zima's knack for mischief and magical surprises keeps everyone on their toes, even in the realm of gemstone restoration. Amidst a picturesque scene of blooming flowers, Captain Gilga found herself captivated by the beauty that surrounded her. The vibrant colors and delicate petals of the Nareens captured her attention, evoking a sense of admiration. John, ever observant, joined the moment, noting the glistening white hues of the flowers. As the two shared this serene experience, Gilga couldn't help but express her genuine affection for Nareens, underscoring her appreciation for their exquisite charm. MC, perhaps sensing the need for a change of scenery, gently informed Gilga that they had reached their destination. The little-known hot spring ruins. The transition from the enchanting Nareens to the hidden allure of the hot spring ruins promised a unique and rejuvenating experience for the captain and her companion. With fond memories of a hot spring experience at John's family home, Captain Gilga's anticipation grew as they arrived at the little-known hot spring ruins. MC, familiar with the etiquette of hot springs, suggested they split up due to the separation of men's and women's springs. The prospect of indulging in the warmth of the water and the tranquility of the surroundings heightened Gilga's excitement, creating an atmosphere of relaxation and anticipation. As Gilga immersed herself in the soothing warmth of the hot spring within the ancient ruins, she marveled at the unexpected luxury that the dilapidated structure offered. The water worked its magic, gradually easing the tension in her muscles and calming her restless thoughts. However, amid this tranquil moment, her keen, elven eyes caught sight of something peculiar on the wall, a pattern that triggered a sense of familiarity within her. Upon closer inspection, Gilga recognized the intricate design as a symbol reminiscent of the Astor family crest, the very emblem she carried on her ring. A surge of curiosity and excitement washed over her, and she couldn't help but wonder if these ruins held more secrets related to her quest to unravel the mysteries of the House of Astor. The unexpected discovery added an intriguing layer to the already enigmatic ambience of the hot spring ruins. Who knew a hot spring could double as a historical treasure trove? Talk about a spa day with a side of mystery. As the other women in the hot spring noticed Gilga's interest in the peculiar pattern on the wall, they exchanged smiles, finding it a rare occurrence to have an elf among them. Amused by the curiosity in Gilga's eyes, they shared the lore surrounding the mysterious ruins. Intrigued, Gilda inquired about the longevity of the pattern on the wall. The women explained that the place was believed to have been constructed by the descendants of the now extinct Lobi people. The history of the ruins added an air of mystique to the already enchanting atmosphere of the hot spring. Gilda couldn't help but feel a deeper connection to the ancient secrets concealed within the walls. Turns out, a hot spring adventure isn't just about relaxation. It's a journey through time and forgotten civilizations. 
John, intrigued by the conversation, asked Captain Gilda about her experience in the hot spring. With a content smile, she expressed how the warm waters had penetrated deep into her bones, providing a soothing and revitalizing sensation. The other women in the spring seemed to share a sense of camaraderie as they inquired about the duo's departure plans. Upon learning that MC and Gilga were preparing to leave, the women chimed in, emphasizing that it was a timely decision. They pointed out that with the moon rising, the atmosphere was bound to take on a special ambience, a cue for the two adventurers to witness a magical night unfolding. Hot springs and moonlit nights. Perfect combination for unwinding and perhaps stumbling upon some enchanting surprises. The women in the hot spring shared an intriguing local tale with John and Gilga, revealing that moonlit nights held a mystical secret within the hot spring ruins. They spoke of the spectral apparition of a lobby woman, a ghostly figure appearing on the boulders behind the ruins. The revelation startled MC, adding an element of mystery to their visit. The woman continued, describing a specific large boulder along the river. Bathed in the soft glow of moonlight, the ghost of a woman materialized, tenderly offering flowers. The haunting tale suggested a poignant narrative, that of a lobby woman continuing to express her love and grief for a departed son through this ethereal ritual. A moonlit encounter with ghostly apparitions, an unexpected twist in the hot spring adventure. Despite the cautionary tales about the ghost of the lobby woman, Captain Gilga, and John decided to venture toward the rumored haunted area. The moonlit night cast an ethereal glow on the surroundings as they approached the boulders behind the ruins. The air was filled with a sense of mystery, and the rhythmic sound of the river added to the eerie atmosphere. As they reached the designated spot, the large boulder stood imposingly, bathed in the silver light of the moon. Gilga's keen eyes scanned the surroundings, half expecting to witness the spectral figure of the lobby woman. MC, though initially confident, couldn't shake off a subtle sense of trepidation. The woman's warning echoed in his mind, reminding him of the potential danger. Suddenly, a soft and chilling breeze swept through the area, making the shadows dance. The duo felt a subtle shift in the atmosphere, and Gilga's grip on her sword tightened involuntarily. At that moment, they both caught a glimpse of a faint figure atop the boulder adorned with flowers, appearing like a spectral offering. The ghostly presence seemed serene, surrounded by an otherworldly aura. Gilga, with a mix of curiosity and respect, observed the scene. Meanwhile, John, while maintaining his bravado, couldn't deny the shiver running down his spine. The women's cautionary words seemed more palpable in this ghostly encounter. As they continued to observe the apparition, a strange sense of peace filled the air. The ghostly figure, frozen in its offering, exuded a poignant beauty that transcended the boundary between the living and the ethereal. Gilva and John stood in silent contemplation, acknowledging the presence of the supernatural. In the end, the encounter left them with a blend of awe and curiosity. As they made their way back, Gilda couldn't help but tease MC about his earlier bravado in the face of the unknown. The night, despite its eerie tales, had gifted them a glimpse into the mystique that lingered in the moonlit ruins. Facing ghosts can be spooky, but a brave knight and an elf captain decided to dance with the supernatural under the moonlight. Who knew spectral encounters could be so enchanting? As they reached the boulder that the old ladies had mentioned, Captain Gilga and MC began to explore the surroundings, their senses heightened by the anticipation of a supernatural encounter. The moon, inching its way into the night sky, cast a gentle glow over the landscape, creating an atmosphere of enchantment. While Gilga was engrossed in examining the area, John found himself grappling with his internal dilemma. He silently berated himself for not being honest about his fear of ghosts. The weight of his unspoken fear seemed to grow heavier with each passing moment. Curiosity got the better of John, and he couldn't help but wonder if Captain Gilga harbored a genuine interest in the paranormal. The prospect of exploring the unknown, especially when accompanied by an elf captain, added an intriguing layer to the moonlit adventure. As the moon ascended higher, its luminous beams revealed a subtle change in the atmosphere. Suddenly, the ghostly figure of the woman emerged, holding a delicate flower in her ethereal grasp. Gilda, catching sight of Tatu on the ghost hand, recognized it as the same pattern she had observed in the hot spring ruins. The ghostly apparition, adorned with the familiar tattoo, stood as a testament to the interconnected mysteries of the ancient Lobi people. Gilda, with a mixture of fascination and reverence, observed the spectral presence. The moonlight seemed to dance on the flower, casting an otherworldly glow around the ghost. John, on the other hand, found himself caught between fear and awe. The revelation of the tattoo on the ghost's hand added an extra layer of intrigue to the encounter. 
the ghost, frozen in a moment of offering, held a certain grace that transcended the boundary between the living and the spectral. In the midst of this surreal encounter, MC couldn't help but glance at Gilga, silently wondering if she found the experience as captivating as he did. The moonlit night unfolded, weaving a tale that intertwined the living with the echoes of a bygone era. Ghostly encounters and ancient mysteries, who knew a moonlit adventure could uncover such spectral connections? John's unspoken fear adds a touch of humor to the ethereal ambience. As the ghostly figure of the woman materialized before them, John couldn't conceal his fear. The spectral presence, though seemingly benign, sent shivers down his spine. In contrast, Captain Gilga, attuned to the supernatural, assured MC that there was no malevolence emanating from the ghost. Instead, she sensed a lingering attachment, a connection tethering the ethereal being to the mortal realm. Driven by her empathetic nature, Gilda expressed a desire to help the ghost find peace. She explained to MC that the woman appeared to be bound by a strong attachment, possibly to a lost loved one. To facilitate the release of the ghost from this earthly attachment, Gilda proposed a unique approach, John pretending to be the son of the ghost. Recalling the information they received earlier about the woman offering flowers for her deceased son, Gilda believed that by symbolically accepting the flowers, John could help sever the emotional ties that bound the ghost to the world. Though hesitant and slightly uncomfortable with the unusual request, Gilda conveyed her belief that this act could provide closure for the spirit. John, caught between his fear of the supernatural and his loyalty to Captain Gilda, reluctantly agrees to play the role of the ghost's son. The moonlit night, already charged with a sense of mystery, took on a poignant aura as the two prepared to engage with the spectral presence. Will John's performance help the ghost find peace, or will it lead to unexpected twists in the tale? MC, despite his inner fear, mustered the courage to fulfill Captain Gilga's unusual request. With a determined expression, he assured Gilga to leave it to him, emphasizing his commitment to carry out any order she gave, even if it meant facing the supernatural. Approaching the boulder, John picked up the flower, signaling the start of their interaction with the ghostly presence. As John questioned the ghost about taking the flower, the ethereal figure drew closer, revealing a face marked by tears and emotions. The tearful gaze touched MC, and in a moment, the ghost vanished. Grateful for John's role in the encounter, Gilda expressed her thanks, recognizing the significance of the act in repaying a debt to the Lobi people who had helped her centuries ago. Later, as they walked away from the ruins, MC inquired about the fate of the ghost, wondering if it had gone to heaven. Gilda, providing insights into elven beliefs, explained that elves don't adhere to the concept of heaven. Instead, they believe in reincarnation, where individuals are reborn as different creatures after death. In the elven worldview, strong sentiments linger in the world even before reincarnation, referred to as lingering attachments. Gilga's revelation about elves encountering familiar faces after a long time resonated with their extended lifespans. To add a touch of poignancy, she shared Noreen's flower language, interpreting it as a symbol of anticipation for the day when they would meet again. Here's to John, the unwitting ghost whisperer. When one of the unit members said farewell to MC and Captain Gilga, the rest of the team couldn't hold back their concerns. It marked another departure, and the onlookers couldn't help but express their worry. This resignation added to the unease that had been growing among them, especially considering that two other members had left just last month. The prevailing sentiment among the remaining team members was a mixture of anxiety and frustration. They made it clear that the recent trend of departures was attributed to the intensified training regime under Captain Gilga's leadership. It seemed that the captain had implemented a more rigorous approach to prevent any slacking within the unit. The departure of two members last month and now another raised questions about the toll the demanding training was taking on the team's morale and cohesion. Looks like Captain Gilga's training program has turned into a real survival of the fittest situation for the team. Captain Gilga, in contrast, held the perspective that each individual possessed unique strengths and capabilities. She saw a silver lining in the fact that some unit members chose to resign while things were relatively calm. From her standpoint, discovering one's true aptitudes before entering challenging situations could be beneficial. Amidst the concerns and departures, MC, who had initially been quite worried, found himself aligning with her captain's perspective. Despite the challenges and the resignations taking place, he chose to trust Captain Gilga's leadership and the philosophy that guided his decisions. Captain Gilga's approach, turning resignations into a self-discovery retreat for the team, because who wouldn't want to find their strengths before facing chaos? In her office, 
Captain Gilga couldn't suppress a sigh of disappointment as she observed yet another round of resignations within the unit for the month. The weight of the departure seemed to bear heavily on her, prompting a moment of self-reflection. As she pondered the situation, Captain Gilga questioned whether her training methods were perhaps too stringent. The persistent resignations led her to reconsider the balance between toughness and leniency in her leadership approach. Recollecting the past, she acknowledged that she had become more lenient compared to her earlier, stricter methods. The evolving nature of the training landscape and the challenges of instructing recruits in the current era played a role in this shift. A sudden knock echoed through the door, and Captain Gilda, already anticipating the visitor, granted entry as MC stepped into her office. With a polite request to enter, MC made their presence known, prompting a curious glance from Captain Gilga. As the captain inquired about the reason for the visit, MC hesitated for a moment before putting forward a suggestion. He proposed a change in pace for the unit, subtly addressing the prevalent challenges and resignations. MC highlighted the presence of a traveling zoo on the outskirts of Vuitton at that time, offering it as an opportunity for the team to unwind and experience something different. Sometimes a change of pace beats a strict training regimen. In making the suggestion, MC aimed to inject a sense of balance into the demanding routine of training and duties. They subtly advocated for a break from the intense atmosphere, emphasizing the importance of fostering camaraderie and taking a moment to appreciate the unique experiences that life outside the unit could offer. Captain Gilga, considering the proposal, weighed the potential benefits of such a change in pace for the well-being of the team. When MC mentioned the zoo, labeling it as Fluffin's Zoo, or something similar, it triggered a noticeable reaction from Captain Gilga. The name seemed to catch her off guard, prompting a momentary shock. Curious about her reaction, MC inquired further, asking if Captain Gilga was familiar with the establishment. In response, Captain Gilga acknowledged that she had indeed heard of Fluffin's Zoo, but her tone hinted at a distant memory. The revelation hinted at a connection between Captain Gilga and the traveling zoo from a bygone era. The mention of fluff and zoos seemed to evoke a mix of nostalgia and perhaps some unspoken history, leaving MC curious about the captain's past experiences with the peculiar sounding zoo. Captain Gilda couldn't help but marvel at the longevity of fluff and zoo, expressing disbelief that it was still going strong after all these years. As she reflected on its history, she recalled that fluff and zoo was initially designed for the general public, providing an enjoyable experience for visitors. However, what made it particularly intriguing was the well-guarded secret it harbored, a covert service known only to a select few. In hushed circles, it was whispered that Fluff and Zoo housed a clandestine service that allowed adults to truly let loose. Captain Gilda, contemplating the prospect of revisiting the place, pondered whether the secret service was still a part of its offerings. Acknowledging the wisdom in MC's suggestion for a change of pace, Captain Gilda conceded that it might indeed be a refreshing break. MC's smile widened as he proposed a visit to Fluff and Zoo, to which Captain Gilga readily agreed. Sometimes even elite units need a day off to explore the wild side. As they stepped into Fluff and Zoo, the bustling crowd immediately caught their attention. The air was filled with the sounds of happy chatter and the excitement of people observing various animals. Captain Gilga, sensing an opportunity, spotted a few individuals who seemed well acquainted with the secrets of the place. She made a mental note to approach them later and inquire about the elusive secret service. Meanwhile, MC's eyes were drawn to a giant lizard that resembled a dragon, capturing his fascination. With an air of curiosity, MC asked Captain Gilga if he could take a closer look. Captain Gilga, understanding the allure of the moment, granted permission and encouraged MC to explore at his own pace. As MC ventured towards the dragon-like lizard, as MC was captivated by the dragon-like lizard, Captain Gilga seized the opportunity to approach a man she believed could provide answers. With determination, she approached the individual, expressing her desire to speak with the director of the zoo. Little did she know that the person before her was, in fact, the director. Fluff and Zoo, where surprises lurk at every corner, even in zoo management. Upon this revelation, Captain Gilga felt a tinge of shyness, but gathered her courage to pose the question that had been on her mind. Inquiring about the service known as the Secret Fluff Time, she sought to uncover whether this unique and discreet offering still existed at Fluff and Zoo. The director, aware of the clandestine aspect of the zoo's services, met Captain Gilga's inquiry with a knowing smile. As they engaged in conversation, the director began to unravel the intriguing history of the Secret Service, 
detailing its continuation and the experiences it offered to those seeking a different kind of enjoyment within the confines of Fluff and Zoo. The director of the zoo, initially confused by Captain Gilga's inquiry, requested her to repeat herself. Undeterred, Captain Gilga, with a burst of conviction, raised her voice and emphatically declared her desire for the secret fluff time. The sudden intensity in her request seemed to resonate, and it clicked for the director as he began to realize that the woman before him was well-versed in the clandestine offerings of their establishment. Captain Gilga, turning awkward moments into intense requests for secret fluff time, with a knowing look, the director acknowledged Captain Gilga's familiarity with their secret menu. Understanding the unspoken request, he calmly informed her that to avail of the secret fluff time, an advance payment was required. He inquired if this arrangement was agreeable to her, laying out the terms for what promised to be a unique and exclusive experience within the depths of Fluff and Zoo. Captain Gilga, eager and more than willing to proceed, simply nodded in agreement. The director, satisfied with her response, instructed her to seek him out once the zoo had closed for the day. He explained that some preparations needed to be made for the secret fluff time experience, and he required the time to ensure everything was in order. Upon receiving this information, Captain Gilga's face lit up with a happy smile. Successfully navigating the inquiries about the secret fluff time, she anticipated the unique adventure that awaited her. As MC rejoined Captain Gilga, he offered an apology for being engrossed in observing the giant lizard. However, Captain Gilga, wearing a contented smile, assured MC that there was no problem at all. She thought that she had also successfully pursued her agenda during his exploration. MC, emphasizing the unexpected enjoyment he found in the giant lizard encounter, expressed his amusement at the irony of bringing Captain Gilga to the zoo for a change of pace, only to end up having the most fun himself. Captain Gilga, undisturbed by this turn of events, assured MC that she didn't mind in the least. Captain Gilga, mastering the art of negotiating secret zoo experiences, because who knew clandestine activities required an advance payment? In the quiet anticipation of the night, Captain Gilga found herself unable to suppress the giggles bubbling up within her. The excitement surrounding the upcoming secret fluff time at Fluff and Zoo had reached its peak. Brimming with enthusiasm, she stepped out into the nighttime atmosphere, ready to embark on this mysterious adventure. Upon her arrival at the zoo, the director, who had been expecting her, greeted Captain Gilgo with a welcoming demeanor. In a thoughtful gesture, he informed her that he would be looking after her weapons or any other metal objects she might have brought with her. However, to the director's reassurance, Captain Gilga confirmed that she hadn't brought any such items, putting his concerns to rest. With a sense of trust established, Captain Gilga and the director prepared to delve into the hidden realms of Fluff and Zoo, where secrets awaited in the quiet hours of the night. The dimly lit paths and the promise of the unknown set the stage for an extraordinary experience that Captain Gilga had eagerly sought. The director assured Captain Gilga that everything was prepared for her, encouraging her to take her time and savor the upcoming experience. As she waited outside, the anticipation built up within her, causing her to squirm with excitement. The thought of the impending secret fluff time at Fluff and Zoo was enough to fill her with giddy enthusiasm. Even elite commanders need their moments of giddy excitement. Not long after, the director returned, offering an apology for the brief wait. Captain Gilga, unfazed by the delay, reassured him that it was no problem at all. With a courteous gesture, the director opened the door, signaling the commencement of the much-anticipated event. In a moment of revelation, the director informed Captain Gilda that she was about to enjoy the one-hour, all-you-can-fluff special. Adding to the intrigue, he disclosed that her companion for the evening would be none other than Mojas, the giant sheep. With a mixture of excitement and curiosity, Captain Gilga stepped into the secret world of Fluff and Zoo, ready to embrace the whimsical and enchanting moments that awaited her. In the secret Fluff time chamber, Captain Gilga was greeted by the sight of Mojas, the giant sheep with its immensely fluffy wool. Overwhelmed by the desire to experience the softness firsthand, Gilda shyly approached the director and asked if she could touch it. The director, with a warm smile, assured her that not only could she touch the fluffy wool, but she was encouraged to enjoy it to her heart's content. Buoyed by the director's permission, Gilga's face lit up with a bright smile. Without hesitation, she leaped towards Mojas and immersed herself in the cloud-like fluffiness of its wool. The sensation elicited joyful giggles from Captain Gilga, who was thoroughly enchanted by the tactile delight of the giant sheep's soft and cozy coat. Who wouldn't want an hour of fluffy enchantment, complete with joyful giggles? 
As the designated time for Captain Gilga's all-you-can-fluff special at Fluffin Zoo approached its end, the director returned to the room where she and Mojas, the giant sheep, resided. Expecting to find her enjoying the last moments of the unique experience, he was surprised to discover Captain Gilga peacefully sleeping on the soft wool of the giant sheep. Moved by the sight of her serene slumber and recognizing the genuine joy she found in the experience, the director decided to extend the time for her. At the training camp, Captain Gilga and General Dutch stood side by side, observing with keen interest as the gray tigers sparred and honed their combat skills. The air crackled with energy as the soldiers engaged in rigorous training routines, their movements precise and disciplined. Amidst this display of martial prowess, General Dutch, a man of weathered countenance and steely resolve, chose this moment to confide in Captain Gilda. With a subtle shift in his demeanor, he leaned in slightly, his voice carrying a weight of significance as he broached the topic of an enigmatic crystal rumored to possess extraordinary properties. In hushed tones, General Dutch recounted the tale surrounding this mystical artifact, describing it as a crystal that had the uncanny ability to reflect the deepest desires and aspirations of those who sought it. His words hung in the air, laden with intrigue and mystery, as he shared snippets of hearsay and speculation he had picked up, perhaps in a moment of leisure at the local tavern. Captain Gilda nodded attentively, mentally noting to himself to stay away from General Dutch on tavern nights, for fear of being pulled into more tales of mystical artifacts and their dubious origins. Captain Gilga, known for her rational mind and unwavering skepticism, listened attentively yet with a hint of reservation. Despite her respect for General Dutch, she couldn't help but harbor doubts about the validity of such fantastical claims. Nevertheless, she remained open-minded, recognizing the possibility that even the most far-fetched tales might contain a kernel of truth. As the conversation unfolded, a nuanced exchange ensued between the two officers, delving into the complexities of belief, skepticism, and the allure of the unknown. General Dutch, ever the pragmatist, acknowledged the potential for the crystal's existence while tempering his optimism with a healthy dose of skepticism. Captain Gilga raised an eyebrow skeptically, mentally drafting a memo titled, Reasons Why I'll Stick to Tactical Training Over Crystal Quests, while trying to maintain a diplomatic expression throughout the conversation. Amidst the relentless clang of steel and the rhythmic footwork of combatants, the training grounds pulsated with the intensity of the gray tiger's drills. Among them, MC stood out, his every movement a testament to years of dedication and skill. With a fluidity born of mastery, he clashed swords with his sparing partner, each strike executed with precision and confidence. As the sparing session unfolded, General Dutch, ever the bearer of intriguing tales, approached Captain Gilga once more his gaze momentarily drawn towards MC's display of prowess. With a faint hint of reverence in his voice, he divulged yet another layer to the legend surrounding the enigmatic crystal. Intriguingly, General Dutch spoke of the crystal's purported ability to grant wishes of familial reunion and romantic destiny. He recounted whispers and murmurs from far-flung corners of the realm, tales spun by travelers and storytellers alike, all converging on a singular notion, that the crystal, if beseeched with heartfelt desires, could reveal the whereabouts of long-lost siblings or even unveil the identity of one's future spouse. With a knowing glint in his eyes, General Dutch imparted the rumored location of the Crystal Sanctuary, a remote mountain cavern nestled within the embrace of jagged peaks and veiled by the mists of time. Captain Gilda exchanged a glance with MC, who was currently demonstrating his swordsmanship with the finesse of a seasoned warrior silently contemplating whether the crystal's powers included granting wishes for fewer training sessions and more leisure time. Amidst the dynamic flurry of combat, MC's dedication and skill shone brightly as he engaged in a spirited bout with his sparing partner. With each deft maneuver and calculated strike, he steadily gained the upper hand, his movements a symphony of precision and grace. As the tension mounted and the clash of steel reverberated across the training grounds, MC's confidence never wavered. And then, with a final decisive blow, his opponent yielded, a gesture of acknowledgement and respect for MC's undeniable prowess. General Dutch, ever observant, couldn't contain his pride as he watched the scene unfold. A smile tugged at the corners of his lips, a silent testament to the satisfaction of seeing a protege flourish under his tutelage. With a nod of approval, he turned to Captain Gilga, his expression alight with admiration as he remarked upon MC's remarkable progress. In response, Captain Gilga, her stoic facade momentarily softened by a hint of warmth, concurred with General Dutch's assessment. With a subtle nod of her head, she acknowledged MC's growth and skill, 
her respect for his achievements evident in her demeanor. Meanwhile, N.C., his face illuminated by a victorious smile, caught the gaze of General Dutch and Captain Gilda. With a wave of his hand, he expressed his gratitude for their support and guidance, a gesture of camaraderie that spoke volumes amidst the backdrop of intense training. Captain Gilga couldn't help but feel a surge of pride for N.C.'s accomplishments, silently wondering if there was a how-to-win sparring matches in style manual she could borrow from him later. In the cozy ambience of the restaurant, N.C. and Captain Gilga found themselves engrossed in conversation, the subdued chatter of fellow diners providing a soothing backdrop to their exchange. Seated across from each other, they shared a moment of respite from the rigors of training, the flickering candlelight casting gentle shadows upon their faces. It was during this lull in the evening's proceedings that Captain Gilga chose to broach the subject of the fabled crystal once more. With a measured tone, she recounted the tales she had heard from General Dutch, her words tinged with a mixture of skepticism and intrigue. Yet even as she expressed doubt about the crystal's existence, there lingered a hint of curiosity in her eyes, a yearning for answers that transcended mere disbelief. In response, M.C., ever the optimist, allowed himself a moment of whimsy as he contemplated the possibilities that the crystal presented. With a wistful smile, he mused about the prospect of using such a mystical artifact to seek out his long-lost lord, his voice tinged with a blend of longing and hope. But Captain Gilga, ever the realist, gently reminded him of the uncertainty surrounding the crystal's existence, her words tempered with a touch of pragmatism. She cautioned against placing too much faith in tales of legend and lore, urging M.C. to temper his expectations with a healthy dose of skepticism. As they debated the merits of chasing after mythical crystals versus ordering dessert, M.C. couldn't help but wonder if maybe, just maybe, a dessert menu held the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of a mysterious woman, her presence casting a sudden ripple in the tranquil atmosphere of the restaurant. With a polite request to join them, she introduced herself as Zima, her arrival seemingly coincidental yet laden with intrigue. With a knowing smile, she acknowledged the unexpected reunion, her words laden with subtle implications and unspoken truths. The conversation took an unexpected turn as Zima and Captain Gilga exchanged pleasantries, their interaction revealing a history tinged with both familiarity and estrangement. As they navigated the delicate balance between past and present, Zima's cryptic remarks hinted at a deeper understanding of the mysteries that surrounded them, her presence imbuing the air with an aura of intrigue and possibility. As Zima joined them, M.C. couldn't help but feel like he'd stumbled into the middle of a medieval soap opera, complete with mysterious characters and cryptic dialogue, wondering if perhaps he should have ordered that dessert after all to sweeten the unfolding drama. The atmosphere in the restaurant shifted palpably as Zima's unexpected revelation hung in the air like a sudden thunderclap, catching M.C. and Captain Gilga off guard in its wake. Their expressions mirrored a mixture of shock and disbelief as they grappled with the realization that Zima possessed first-hand knowledge of the elusive Seeker's Crystal, a phenomenon they had only recently entertained as a mere possibility. With a quiet intensity, Zima recounted her encounter with the Crystal, her words carrying the weight of distant memories and whispered secrets. She spoke of a time long ago when she had stumbled upon the artifact, its ethereal presence leaving an indelible impression upon her consciousness. As M.C. and Captain Gilva exchanged incredulous glances, a sense of revelation washed over them, their skepticism giving way to a newfound sense of wonder and possibility. For in Zima's words lay the confirmation they had sought, the Seeker's crystal was not merely a figment of legend, but a tangible reality waiting to be discovered. Yet even as the prospect of locating the crystal ignited a spark of hope within them, Zima tempered their enthusiasm with a sobering revelation. She spoke of the crystal's waning mana, its energy reserves depleted over time, casting doubt upon its current state of functionality. Her words carried a note of caution, a reminder that their quest was fraught with uncertainty and peril. Captain Gilga's heart sank at the realization, her hopes momentarily dimmed by the specter of disappointment. Yet even in the face of adversity, she found the strength to persevere, her determination unwavering in the face of adversity. With a heavy sigh, she voiced her resolve, acknowledging the challenges ahead while refusing to abandon the possibility of discovering the crystal. In a gesture of unexpected kindness, Zima offered a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty, her smile radiating warmth and reassurance. With a twinkle in her eye, she posed a question that left M.C. and Captain Gilda momentarily bewildered. Did they wish to see the crystal for themselves? M.C. and Captain Gilda exchanged incredulous glances, 
silently questioning whether they'd accidentally stumbled into a fantasy novel plotline or if someone had spiked their drinks with hallucinogens. Inside the solemn confines of Captain Gilga's quarters, a sense of anticipation hung in the air as Zima, her demeanor imbued with an air of quiet determination, set about her arcane work. With practiced precision, she began inscribing intricate symbols upon the polished wooden floor, her movements fluid and purposeful as she etched the contours of a teleportation circle with deft strokes of her hand. As MC and Captain Gilga observed in silent fascination, the realization dawned upon them that Zima possessed a depth of knowledge and skill far beyond their expectations. The revelation that she was capable of creating a teleportation circle elicited a mixture of awe and surprise, underscoring the enigmatic nature of their newfound ally. However, Zima's explanation soon tempered their enthusiasm, her words laden with a note of caution and practicality. Despite the seeming convenience of the teleportation circle, she revealed its limitations with solemn candor. The duration of their stay at the destination was constrained to a mere six hours, a fleeting window of opportunity in the grand tapestry of time. Moreover, Zima elucidated further restrictions that compounded the circle's inherent limitations. The caster of the spell, in this case, Zima herself, would be unable to accompany them on their journey, severing the connection between creator and traveler. Additionally, any objects or companions they hoped to bring back from the other side would remain beyond their reach, forever consigned to the realm of impossibility. For Zima, the teleportation circle held little practical value beyond its singular purpose, to facilitate their quest to behold the elusive Seeker's crystal. Yet despite its limitations, she conveyed a sense of optimism, recognizing the potential for discovery and adventure that awaited them on the other side. As she concluded her explanation, Zima issued a final piece of advice, born of her intimate knowledge of the terrain they would soon traverse. With a knowing smile, she urged MC and Captain Gilga to prepare for the chill that awaited them at their destination, recommending that they bring their cloaks to ward off the biting cold of the season. And so, with the teleportation circle shimmering with latent power beneath their feet and the promise of discovery beckoning from beyond, MC and Captain Gilga stood poised on the threshold of adventure, their hearts brimming with anticipation for the journey that lay ahead. As Zima unveiled her intricate teleportation circle, MC and Captain Gilga couldn't help but wonder if they accidentally stumbled into a crossover episode between a fantasy epic and a sci-fi thriller, contemplating whether they should pack sunscreen or fur-lined boots for their upcoming adventure. As the arcane incantations flowed from Zima's lips, enveloping the trio in a cocoon of mystical energy, the fabric of reality itself seemed to warp and shift around them. Colors danced and melded together, giving way to a kaleidoscope of hues that painted the world in hues of otherworldly brilliance. Amid this surreal transformation, MC and Captain Gilga found themselves transported to a realm of ethereal beauty and untamed wilderness. The air crackled with the intensity of the storm that raged around them, its ferocious winds whipping at their cloaks and threatening to tear them from their grasp. In the face of nature's fury, Captain Gilga's instincts kicked in her voice cutting through the howling wind as she urged MC to stay close by her side. With a sense of urgency, they pressed onward, their eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of shelter from the tempest that raged around them. Their prayers were answered when they spied a cavern nestled amidst the rocky terrain, its yawning mouth offering sanctuary from the relentless onslaught of the storm. With a shared sense of relief, they hastened towards the shelter of its embrace, seeking refuge from the elemental forces that assailed them. As they settled within the confines of the cavern, Captain Gilga's thoughts turned to their predicament, her voice tinged with concern as she assessed their situation. With the storm showing no signs of abating, she knew that their best course of action was to wait out the tempest and pray for clearer skies. In a gesture of camaraderie and compassion, Captain Gilga offered her cloak to MC, her heart swelling with warmth as she witnessed his blush of gratitude. Despite the discomfort of their surroundings, she found solace in the simple act of sharing warmth with her comrade in arms, their bond forged in the crucible of adversity. As they huddled together beneath the cloak, Captain Gilda couldn't help but marvel at the intimacy of their shared proximity. She could feel MC's breath against her skin, his presence a comforting presence amidst the chaos that raged outside. Memories flooded her mind as she reflected on their journey together, from the trials of training camp to the perils of the present moment. She marveled at MC's growth and resilience, his strength a testament to the indomitable spirit that burned within him. As she stole a sideways glance at him, she was met with the unexpected sight of his gaze meeting hers, their eyes locking in a moment of shared understanding. 
Startled by the intensity of the connection, she quickly averted her gaze, masking her surprise with a casual remark. But even as the storm raged on, Captain Gilda couldn't shake the feeling of warmth that enveloped her heart, a sensation born of camaraderie and companionship amidst the wild beauty of the unknown. And as they weathered the tempest together, she knew that no matter what trials lay ahead, they would face them as allies bound by the unbreakable bonds of friendship and trust. As they sought refuge in the cavern, MC couldn't help but feel like he'd stumbled into a scene straight out of a dramatic fantasy novel, silently praying that the storm outside didn't come with a side order of dragons.